cool. Well, if I could, Alexa, turn the lights to purple. Oh yeah, trying to find the trying to find the right mood lighting with. I feel very dark right here, and she didn't even listen. Fuck it. How you doing, Tabor? Good. How are you, buddy? I'm not too bad. Tabor Pepper. That's the that's the full name, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Miami Dolphins. Do you want my social security number? Not yet. We'll save that. Okay. I don't want everyone else to have that. Oh, there's my vacuum. Mm. He's a. Uh, his vacuum. Oh, he meant legit the vacuum. I thought he said, uh, your vacuum. Did that fall or mm -hmm. was no, it falling it was or something? Oh, so I had a Dyson vacuum back there. <laughs> Dude, the Dysons are the shit, man. Dude, that one, I, when we, this house that we have right now is, um, <clears throat> it's all like hardwood. Um, but we had a condo that was all carpet and it was like, such a good vacuum that it was actually fun to vacuum the house <laughs> dude oh my god it's very easy to clean you've got the the cylinders so you see all this stuff and you have a dog i have a dog like we uh with all the hair you get my roommates have cats it's it's so exhilarating to clean it all up so easily it's like okay now i know it's clean <laughs> oh shit this glows my uh my roommate some someone in the house had a uh one of those what do you call it uh, levels it looks like it came from a ruler. Oh, sure, I didn't yeah. know it fucking glue until now. Is glue the past tense of glowed? I don't know. I'm not sure. What are all those boxes over there on that side? <laughs> Which side? Uh, that stuff? That's just... Head. Yeah, that's just that's just shit. Like, so these are giant bean bags, actually. There are two oh. of them. It's this, they're called the love sacks oh, or something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. That. Uh, no, I was on a conference call the other day, and someone said, hey, clean your room. Or uh, make your bed, is what they said. Oh, but uh big, yeah yeah but no the boxes are just random crap from cleaning out the garage so my roommates turned the garage into a gym which is very useful in this moment oh nice yeah yeah i'm building one in the front yard soon that's the way to do it man that's like some southern california <sighs> shit it is it's it's just crazy because all everyone wants to build a gym right now so all of the equipment, the company that I'm going through is called Rogue. Literally all their stuff is sold out. So I have to, oh, yeah. I'm on all the lists for like specific products that I want. So they send me an email like the second it comes back in stock and I've just been snagging like one piece here, one piece there. It's taking a while. Yeah. What do you have so far? Anything complete? No. No. Because I, I also have to wait for the contractor. He's going to pour out leveling sand and then put um, concrete stepping stones on there and make like a 10 by 10 thing and then i'm gonna put rubber mats on top of that oh so you're getting shit like really put together like this isn't just some cobbled together little bit of workout equipment no i don't know how long this um quarantine stuff is gonna take so i gotta start lifting somehow oh yeah absolutely so what's the uh what's the schedule for you guys right now normally when there's not a pandemic going on in the world yeah um we start if you have a new head coach that year you get to start two weeks before the rest of the teams and the rest of the teams start i think this year we were ironically starting on 420 <laughs> uh, but now we're not going to be starting on time so what's that was that a little bit of workout yeah so the first phase is um just work working out for two weeks like you're not allowed to do um football related drills on the field at all uh, just running and lifting um, and then after two weeks you head into the second phase of OTAs and you start doing uh, like football workouts and yada 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 so what's the football workout Are we talking like the tires and, and the cones and stuff oh no like the football the football workouts are like on the field like uh, technique stuff for individual positions so and like going over protections and schemes and stuff like that like the first two weeks you'll do like the tires or whatever your coach strength coach strength staff wants to do but um the actual football related work is all technique and game plan and schemes and stuff nice nice so do you um so what's the like a lot of companies you know just outside of the football world right like businesses are trying to find ways to keep their people engaged keep them employed and all that keep them doing something uh you know either whether it's their normal job or keeping their skills up like what are you guys doing as far as that have your team sent out regimens that you're supposed to be working on at home so going into the off season anyway they'll send us like a a thing to like if we want to work out at home or if we have a gym 
that we work out at if we're if because a lot of people like the majority of teams like players on teams don't live where the team is during the off season. So like if you have a gym you go to, your coaches will send you the singing. You can follow it and basically be doing um, what they want you to be doing, or you can hire a personal trainer and get ready that way. Um, so basically. Basically, coaches aren't even allowed to talk to us until 420. So, like, we still have zero direction as to what we're going to do. No shit. So, what the, what's the reasoning behind that? It's just the CBA that we have, the collective bargaining agreement, because we're a players' union, um, basically against the owners. Um, and it's just a part of our workers' rights that uh, we don't. That they can't, they can't screw with you, like, in between seasons. Yeah, because, like, back in the old days, it was I'm a year-long thing. Like, football was literally all year long as far as the training, and, like, they had to force you to do shit. They could force you to do stuff, or else they cut you. We just have, like, we fought as a union for many, many years. Like, we're still fighting, basically, um, just for more rights, like, as athletes. Because if the coaches and owners had their way, we would literally be living on a football compound and all year long we'd be working out and we wouldn't really have much to say so people finally started getting together in like the 60s 70s and 80s and like striking against the owners and stuff oh yeah screw that well i'm glad you got to get into the nfl when when things are a little better right yeah it's really f <laughs> it's funny like being on like the online like well i don't really do online politics but obviously i follow destiny and listen to all of his stuff it's just funny people giving me flack for like technically being a one percenter or whatever but when they hear that we're in a union they're like wait <laughs> 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 union's good rich man bad like they don't know what to think because you can still be mistreated right the fact that you're still making a, yeah. a, you know a shit ton of money and getting to play you know football doesn't mean that you're you know not o at risk for being overworked or mistreated yeah like one of the owners net worth uh, is one of the owners' net worth is eight point four billion. Like whoa, like they're in charge of us. So like they're the super rich in charge of <laughs> guys that they're making rich rich. So it's yep. just weird. No, I I, like, I get it. Yeah. Well, I don't get it. It's a weird but... thing. It is a weird thing though. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It it is interesting though. Um, how what's your experience been like so far as far as being the NFL? Like you you've been playing football for all these years. Uh, now you're the NFL, right? You've made it. You're that little itty bitty bit that fucking succeeds, and you're there. Yeah. Is it what you thought it would be? Is it way different? Like, uh, tell me about the the experience. It's like a long. It's like a long answer. Like my football experience as a whole is like my dad played football at University of Illinois in '89 and '90, um, and so I grew up just with the notion, like, oh, like, duh, I'm gonna play college football like kudos to my parents they never really like forced me to do anything with sports like they never were like you got to go to this football camp blah, blah 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 they weren't like those crazy parents who were yelling at the refs and stuff like that which i thank them for a, a ton mm -hmm. like i'm so thankful that they weren't like that um but <laughs> um yeah one year i wanted to quit actually and they let me quit they were like the night before the last day to like apply they were like are you sure are you sure it was never like no you're doing it they just hounded me for two hours <laughs> like like if you see everybody like going out to go like to practice and stuff like you you can't go out after tomorrow and i'm like yeah i know blah 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 and i remember the very first week um of the season whenever i we went to school and i saw all of my old teammates wearing their jerseys to school and like back in middle school you would wear your jersey to school and then there would be a girl that you were like talking to or like liked you and they would ask you to wear your jersey for the day and you would let them wear your jersey for like the whole school day and like that was <laughs> god that was such like a deep buried memory holy crap oh my god that came out of nowhere no i you're talking about high school right uh middle school I, yeah in seventh grade like sixth seventh eighth grade they would let us give the girls our jerseys on game day basically. dude so I, I played i played football for um sixth grade through uh sixth grade through ninth grade and then i was like oh, i prefer band but uh up till then yeah no i remember that shit that was those jerseys meant a lot man did you guys have the whole thing where you couldn't step on your school logo in the uh, locker room 
Um, in middle school and stuff like that, we didn't really have rules like that. But I know, even in college, honestly, there were some guys who were like, "Hey, don't walk on the S in our locker room." But mm-hmm. for the most part, nobody really gave a shit. <laughs> like, Dude, it's uh, in the middle of the locker room. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to walk around. <laughs> some guys cared. Some guys didn't. Usually, everybody like the first week the freshmen got there, we would scream at them. Yeah, a little bit um, hazing. Just like. I mean, yeah, if you even want to call that hazing, but we would just scream at them just that very first week they were there, and then after that, nobody gave a shit. No, my school was militant about it, like, really aggressive, really aggressive. Yeah. So, of course, I walked on it because I had to be that asshole. I got my face shoved in snow for it. (laughs) Classic cringe liking. Mm. Cringe. I mean, no, but that's, like, that's been a consistent thing for me. It's, like, I... You know, don't push the button, but I really want to push the button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that that's been sense. a lot of problems. But, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> so then, like, 7th, 8th, ninth, played all through there. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to play college football, blah, blah, blah. And then I got to 10th grade. <laughs> I lived in Oklahoma for from when I was 6 to when I was 15. Uh, and when I got into – yeah, so – going into 10th grade I moved to Michigan and I remembered or I was like still with the mindset of like oh I'm gonna play college football blah 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 and then I like took a second I was like I'm fourth string wide receiver and like third string D end like how am I supposed to play college football again like nobody's gonna recruit (laughs) me like what the fuck and I had I started long snapping in like eighth grade um, and it, uh, I, I'd always been the starting long snapper then, and I was going to camps and stuff. So I was finally like, oh, I'll get to college by long snapping. Because uh, that had actually started to pick up a little bit of popularity and notoriety, like getting recruited for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just like took it and ran. And then my senior year of high school, at the end of that, I was ranked like fifth in the nation for it for my graduating class of 2012. Hot damn. Um, and I got there was like a there's like another like whole long story of like my recruiting process but like long story short um i was i'm the first and so far the only long snapper in michigan state history to get offered a scholarship out of high school so i ended up going to the school that i loved the most during their recruiting process even though halfway through the recruiting process they kind of turned me down but then the guy that they signed for to be the long snapper got kicked off the team after a year so then there was a spot available and they uh-huh. really needed me so then they offered me a scholarship so it like really 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 worked out so how did college, it... college was fucking awesome i loved Michigan <laughs> state so much holy shit those are some of the most fun years of my life so to highlight my ignorance um the m the michigan blue and the wolverines is that yep. michigan tech or or that's, michigan. that's university michigan. Of michigan university of michigan, michigan. okay we fucking hate those guys okay Oh uh, yeah, no. I'm sorry. So my roommate, you know, you asked me th- about this before because you saw the flag. I'm an Ohio State fan, uh, but uh, my yeah, I know. Yeah. But my my roommate's a Michigan fan, and so that's why I have that flag in my in my Did place. You go to Michigan? Nope, nope. Just uh, just a Classic. Michigan fan. He's a Walmart Wolverine. <laughs> uh, he said uh, you're a Walmart Wolverine. <laughs> He's got one. He got one of these for Christmas. He's very proud of it. <laughs> Oh, that's disgusting. My, <laughs> my Dolphins helmet is in the back of my car. Oh, man. So do you get a like Dolphins helmet? A couple questions. First, your jersey. Do you get new jerseys every year? Uh, I mean, if I – we can get new jerseys whenever we want. Like, we have – this year we had so many alternates. So we had, like, these throwback unis that resembled the ones that we used to wear in, like, the 60s. Um, but we have, like, two home – so we have like one set for home, one set for away, and then you can like mix and match the pants, and then you can mix and match like the helmet design if you want to do the throwback helmet too. So like I think technically I have four jerseys. My mom took them home whenever she visited for Christmas or after Christmas. Um, so I don't have any of the actual uh, dolphins. I don't think I have anything dolphin in my house <laughs> right now. I'm trying to look in my closet. Really have that team spirit, don't you? I mean, no, I, I mean, I do, but it's like, I wanted my mom to like, take it to a safe place all the way back in Michigan. This is one Jersey that I have I actually just got this. So I made friends with a hundred thieves Fortnite player. Oh shit. And I'm like a huge hundred thieves fan. And he, uh, he sent me his Jersey 
That's pretty slick. Can I see the front? Dude, that's nice. Like, I'm like super happy about this. Like I was like, really awesome. in my living room like a little girl. <laughs> so yeah, you uh like, are you a fan of like the streamers cool. or are you a fan of like some of the esports people? Um I just like the organization of like Hundred Thieves. I think it's super cool because they're doing like a little bit more than just esports. Like they're into like the streetwear brand mm -hmm. type stuff, which I really, really like. Um I read year, actually this year I like did kind of a bucket list thing and I wanted a lot of a ton of guys in the NFL that make way more money than me have like stylists and they spend like stupid amounts of money on their clothing and stuff. So I actually this year I hired a stylist for just just the game outfits that I wore like into the games and stuff. It was so cool. It was so much fun. It made it, I don't know just having a stylist like every week I would come home and there would be a package of like specifically picked out clothes from my stylist for me to wear that week to a game. And I don't know. It just made me feel like a million bucks. That's really cool. I, I've always That's noticed awesome. like the, you know, you had the, um, you had that contest you guys were doing right with the dolphins where they were posting the, you know, <laughs> yeah. you versus the other person and all that. And, uh, just the outfit competition. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen like Conor McGregor after a fight, like the way he's dressed and all that. And I want, yeah. I've always wondered like, do these just guys, do they hire stylists or do they just oh, they, have yeah. impeccable fashion sense? There's a few guys who actually do like have really really good taste in clothing and stuff like that. For like the most part, though, it's all stylists. Like, and some of them are so expensive, and especially for the basketball players, like holy shit, they must spend so much money on stylists because they they play so many games in a season. We only play eleven games in a season, mm -hmm. or sorry, sixteen games in a season. Um, so we really need only like sixteen <laughs> outfits. But those guys play so many, like. There's entire, it, it's really cool. I like it because I'm kind of like a social media guy. Like my um, major in college was uh, media and information and I specialize in interactive and social media. Um, so like the way, the reason why it's so big now for like guys to have different outfits every time they walk into a game is because um, they're just aligning them, their brand. Like the biggest thing for athletes now is you're an athlete, like that's your brand. But then the thing that you have to think about is after football, after basketball, after baseball, like, did you align yourself with a brand after the fact? Like, are you going to have any sort of job offers? Like, I like the esports and streaming stuff. Like, that's my brand. Like, people um, in the Dolphins organization know me as the gamer. They're, I have, like, teammates, like, hitting me up, asking me about certain games. Blah, 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 blah. Like, that's just, they tell you to always align yourself with a different brand other than football because one day football is going to end yeah one day basketball is going to end so um a lot of guys are doing that with fashion and there's tons and tons and tons of instagram uh accounts all over social media um that it's literally called like league fits um f-i-t-s um and it all it is is what people are wearing when they walk into games interesting it's a, hu it's a huge instagram account i mean I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see. <laughs> so, uh, have you heard of a Kyle Long? Well, I'm sure you've heard of Kyle. You know who Kyle Long is. Yeah. Um, yeah. League fits like has like five hundred thousand um, followers. Holy shit! Yeah, Kyle Long. Uh, he. Uh, Kyle Long has a brother. I actually hung out with him at the Super Bowl week. Kyle. Yeah. What's his dad? Howie, I think. Uh, the. I don't right. Know, but, dude, Kyle is. <laughs> was so cool so you know what rough and rowdy is like barstool stuff yeah yeah so my agent got me on the list to get into the barstool super bowl party but i didn't realize it was a rough and rowdy too mm. so oh you I'm went there, to one like, yeah i'm there with like all my teammates and um all of a sudden like kyle long is like standing right next to us and we're and he's like He's like triple fisting beers because he's such a big human. He has like three beers somehow like stacked up like this all in one hand in both hands. And I'm like, holy shit. And he was just offering us beers. And we were, we, we talked for like two hours watching all these rednecks box <laughs> each other uh, with just a shit ton of like NFL players and like people who got on VIP lists and shit. I don't know. It was so fun. But he was super nice. I had never met him before. Sorry. I went on a tangent. No, no. That's really sick. Uh, the reason I asked you about him is because he streams, right? He, I don't know if he streams, but I met him. 
it would take me forever to find the the picture but i, I met him at a um at uh what was it the columbus major for csgo in 2016 it was oh, him so and it's probably him and because uh, he has a brother it's kyle long and chris long so one of the two streams i think it might be kyle though so Ky yeah so kyle and then there was another guy uh i think he was a tight end i'm not totally sure but uh he uh no he was a tackle but he's retired now he hurt his foot but anyway i met them they were getting really into it um it was the brazilian team i can't remember the name of it off oh, the top shit. of my head but they were like kind of working with them and and i think they were going to do some stuff with them but yeah no did did you know he was really big into into the esports gaming scene i knew one of them was i can't remember yeah so also that guy's how old how tall are you i'm six four and a half almost six five that man is fucking I, giant kyle's kyle's six six but i swear to god when he he's broad man up, when he was standing next to me he looked <laughs> way bigger yeah kyle long is the one that actually streams wait you're six four holy shit i'm I, essential my nfl like official height is like six four and three quarters but i I don't like saying that online because all the fucking incels and height cells and simps are like, oh, you got to add the three quarters. <laughs> I mean, that's basically another inch. So as far as I'm concerned, you're yeah, six five. Like the, yeah, it's like when it comes to football, <laughs> I mean, they measured us specifically to tell us exactly how tall we are. So, so but I never, I never want to say six five and then stand next to someone and be not six five. Yeah. So I always say six four. <laughs> So I want to I want to backtrack a second, and I want to ask yep. you about the time when you decided you were going to go for the long snapper, right? Mm -hmm. What did you say you were playing wide receiver? Was it in tight end? Playing as a loose term, I was practicing but you were, against the wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how did that feel? Like there's a there's a difference in feel like from the position of I'm playing tight end or I'm playing wide receiver versus being the long snapper. So you you know it's kind of like if you're playing in League of Legends and you're like, well fuck man, I'm not gonna make it as a jungle and challenger, but I'm gonna go to you know top lane, right? You might not actually enjoy the lane, even if it gets you to challenger, even if it gets you in front of teams. So how did Honestly, you feel? It's like it's like you don't have to be nice. It's literally switching because like when I was younger, I was the quarterback all the way from first grade to like eighth grade. Like I was the shit. I was super athletic, and then I don't know why. I just I I hated being the quarterback, so I just stopped. And then it was really weird. Like I don't even know how it happened. I think it was once like school ball started, and like way more kids were on the team. There, I used to be like a freak athlete. I don't know what the fuck happened, but there were a lot more kids athletic than me. And then I just kind of slipped down into the ranks of like wide receiver. I didn't really like it once I was playing it and stuff. So. But honestly, like, if you're going to make a league analogy, it's literally going from, like, mid lane being Bjergsen to some fucking obscure support that nobody knows. Like, that's essentially basically what I did. So um, now that you've made it. snapper is, like, the most support role ever. <laughs> so now that, you, now that you've made it, do you feel happy about the decision? Knowing so where you were in that I moment? I love long snapping. Like, I, I love it. People clown on it all the time. It's, like, really, really annoying, but, like, fans who would like actually know football and then i'd say like 90 percent of my teammates all appreciate what i do and like embrace me for it because there's people who are like oh you can't even you can't play football so you decided to be a long snapper blah blah blah, blah. and like that's just the mo is like oh the long snapper traditionally it's like oh the least athletic person on the team just throw them as long snapper all they have to do is throw a ball between their legs it's basically the whole meme with it. And yeah. It's like, it's like whatever. It's like for a long time, yeah, that was true. But about 10 years ago, people really started specializing in it. And it's gotten a lot of people really, really far. I, again, it used to be one of those things where, like, if you were a second or third string linebacker or tight end on an NFL roster or a college roster and you really wanted to get on the field, it was like, oh, I'll learn how to long snap. And, like, that's just how the position really started, honestly. And then now there are people who strictly do long snapping, and it's been like that for probably the past like fifteen years. Oof, that's a. Uh, I it's interesting to see how a game that's been around since what nineteen oh three or something like that can continue to change. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like big changes funny, like the, that. The other thing is the a couple years ago the NFL put out like a poll for the coaches. And it was like rank the most important positions on a football team, and I shit you not, it goes quarterback number one. This is NFL coaches voting mm -hmm. on it, by the way. 
Quarterback number one, long snapper number two. Okay, question for you. With that, you've seen the. I assume you've seen what is it? The uh, the what's that movie with the fuck about the, the football side? player? Yep, there you go. The Blind Side. Yeah. So there's that quote at the beginning that says something to the effect of like the whatever that position that guy played is the second highest paid position on the team. Yep. Is that? Uh, uh, yeah. So, so where did that rank in that? Left tackle. I don't know. Let's see. Because that, that movie made it sound like, aside from the quarterback, that's no, like it's, the... It's super important. that the They hammed it up because that was the name of the movie, but... Um... <sighs> okay, that's not... Where are the quotes? I don't know, but they're pretty up there. They The left tackles, if you're like a really, really good left tackle, like you'll make a shit ton of money. I uh, I always like, uh, as someone that was in the military, watching military movies, there, there can be some real triggering things. Like... Mm-hmm. A triggering is in annoying like that's not how it is we don't talk yeah, like that you know all. things like that yeah so how do you feel watching movies like the blind side or, or football movies the blind side is the blind side's a fine movie because they don't do a whole lot of maybe any given sunday stuff it was yeah. more of like a biopic of like that family which was yeah probably for the most part true the stuff that they did get right right with that movie was like the fanfare of like recruiting the kid like you like the top recruits like kids like him will have head coaches lining up outside of their door practically like coming for in home visits all that stuff um Haley my fiance started watching this uh CW show called All American which ironically I just met the creator of because he was a former dolphin uh I met him last month at like this business thing that the dolphins put on um and she started watching it and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I just met the creator. He used to play for the Dolphins. He played for a couple other teams, blah, blah, blah. And she's watching it for a couple days. And then I hop in, and I'm just, like, laying on the couch watching it with her. And I'm watching, and it's, like, <laughs> this scene of, like, the locker room. And everybody's quiet. I, I don't know if they they lost the week before or something like that. And then, like, stereotypical, like, white guy comes in. He goes, come on, guys. This isn't how the Eagles operate. He was like, we got we got the the Wolves coming in this week. Like, we got to step it up. And everyone in the locker room was like, yeah. And it just oh. it made me cringe so hard on the couch. And I was like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Like, oh, God. It made me oh, uh. shudder. <laughs> so uncomfortable. Oh, you ever watch Friday Night Lights? I actually haven't. I watched the movie like a long time ago, but I know the TV show. Like, I I literally try to stay away from all that shit because I, I don't even want to risk the cringe fest. All right, what about uh, any given then, Sunday? Uh, I watched that a long time ago. That's cool. That's just more like a badass movie type thing. Uh-huh. I'm not trying to be like too cringe. Um, <laughs> one the one that I absolutely refuse to watch is um. The one on Netflix, uh, Last Chance You. I've not heard of this. No. Oh shit! You would probably love it. Um, but basically, it's it's these top recruits who go to like the Alabamas, the Ohio States, the Michigan States, mm-hmm. the Oregon's. Um, but they're fuck ups, and so when they get kicked off those teams, they go to Last Chance You to get more film and ball out, and then hopefully go to another big university to like correct their ways so people love it because it's it, i'm pretty sure it's like pretty dramatic and stuff like that because it's this is really the last line for kids like that um that is this really real yeah, yeah yeah it's it's like a docuseries basically oh they okay have multi- they have multiple seasons of it um the reason why i refuse to watch it is being a college football player I know, and basically, I mean, we're in college, but it's like we're co-workers with those kids who fucked up every opportunity that they got to the point where they had to get kicked off the team. So in my mind, I'm like, why the hell would I want to watch a TV show about a full team of all people like that? Like, I don't want to watch that at all. That sounds miserable. They, they uh... are the, Like, some of those guys, like, I remember some of the guys that got kicked off. And I know a kid who was on our team who got kicked off and then what went to the junior college that last chance you was covering. 
I don't have it. Uh, can you bring me my food actually though? Thanks. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, like, working with those people were they they were so difficult, and it was all about them, and they didn't give a shit about anybody else. And like, I don't want to watch a TV show about that. Like, that sounds miserable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really? It's really close to us. It's like less than a mile away. Cool. Sorry, we ordered. Uber no, Uber. all good. What'd you get? I got a lobster Philly cheese or a shrimp Philly cheesecake. Oh, that sounds fucking tasty. Okay, so first of all, you say you've worked with. Have you worked with like the Last Chance people before? No, no, no. no. I'm saying like guys like guys okay. that went to schools like that. I played with and they ended up getting kicked off. Like I've been around mm. the type of people who end up in, in oh, shows you know, like that. So actually I would really probably like that show because I like the story of the person that's like fucked up, done something stupid, whatever it is. And then Trying like gets that second chance. chance. Yep. I mean, people love it. Like apparently it's really, really great TV. There's a lot I of, I just don't, I just <laughs> refuse to, I don't know. I just like, God to end up where they are for the most part. It's like, some of the guys there are the guys who are like teetering on like their ability and like couldn't quite make it mm -hmm. to D one, which is fine. There's I have nothing against those guys. Yeah. But the reason why it's called Last Chance U is because it's like they fucked up at the highest level and are looking for redemption. Understandable. And by the way, feel free to to dig in and eat. Like go at it. I'll, I'll do it in a <laughs> polite manner. Uh, to be professional. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. We brought up we've brought up TV and Netflix, so let's talk quarantine entertainment. Like, what have, what have you been doing, like TV wise? What have you been watching? TV wise, um, Haley and I just watched uh, Gone Girl. Had you not seen that before? No, I have. That's like it was like my third or fourth time watching it. Like, okay, I love that movie, but as a guy, <laughs> especially a guy that's engaged, it is so stressful to watch now because it's. A, Cause the whole the whole time when you're watching the 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 girl like do her shit, you're like looking over at your significant <laughs> other. <you're> like, <laughs> like you crazy mother! Like you could actually fucking do this to me, couldn't you? <laughs> All right, spoilers. I, 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 yeah, I won't give anything away. But oh like, no, please. fuck it! This is an eight year old no, no, movie no, no, or whatever. No, I don't want to because I know someone in chat right now that hasn't seen it, and I don't want to ruin it for him. Okay, um, the one scene, the one scene where he just says, "You bitch," you know what I'm talking about. Oh, on the porch or oh, whatever. No, uh, porch, yeah, yep. Yeah, he does say that. That moment was just. Later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you fucking bitch. That's all he says. Okay. Okay. So do you need to run and grab something? No. No, I was just oh, readjusting. Okay. No, you nope. You're good. Up. Okay. Um, basically the plot, not, I'm not going to give anything away, but basically uh, these two people are in like a very unhappy marriage. And then all of a sudden the wife goes missing and the husband has absolutely no clue what's going on. Basically, you find out that she stayed her own disappearance. Um, and there's all this underlying story stuff, stuff with her past, stuff with his past. And the ending, I love it because I love the endings. I don't like happy endings in movies. They're so overdone. They're so cliche. And this ending makes me so happy, even though it stresses me the fuck out. I'm so glad that it's not like a happy-go-lucky happy ending. That was such a stressful movie. It really was. Like, I'm flashing through all the different scenes, the bedroom scene near the end. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, all those with moments. Patrick Harris. Yep. Oh, God. Like, just. There's oh. some great acting in it, too. It's really, really great. The funniest thing is, like, the main female character, I haven't seen her do any other work whatsoever, but she got nominated for an Oscar for that movie and then, like, dipped off the face of the earth. It's. <laughs> she's it's awesome because she's, like. She's attractive enough to be that crazy <laughs> uh, with all the shit that she pulled off oh man so the first of all it's a book uh as well oh, it is. i, I, I have yeah. i haven't read it there's another book she wrote the uh called i think girl on uh, the train, girl on train. That's have a you good seen that one too. that's a really good movie yeah absolutely so Haley said both of those 
she, I, Haley said that Gone Girl is the best book to movie adaptation she's ever seen, and then Girl on the Train is one of the better ones that she's seen, but it's not as perfect as Gone Girl. I'm going to now read Gone Girl because of that. I, I haven't read it yet, so yeah. I'm going to read it and then rewatch the movie. Dude, this thing? Holy shit. Hold on. Let me, let me see that it. shit. I'm going to try to get it on camera without spilling it everywhere. It sounds like a messy um, sandwich. It's it's a thick old boy. Oh, God. Is <laughs> there beef on there, too? Philly cheesesteak. What all's on there? Like some cheese and seasoning. and. Is that bacon? Like, what's the, the brownish looking stuff? That's the Philly cheesesteak. Oh, so it's actual actually. Steak. It's oh. Like, there's steak in it with shrimp on top. Got it. That's next fucking level. Take a bite oh, of that. I, have, I need a bigger fucking desk. God damn it. Eat this it, quarantine Chris. Is, this quarantine is cucking me because I needed to go to Ikea to get this huge desk so I could have like my triple monitor. I'm still stuck on this small desk that I had to buy when I moved down here. I think everyone, everything from weightlifting to computer tech. Yeah, eat that boy. Mm, don't don't hide the love from us. Let us see it. Bye. Eat that I shit. <laughs> no, we uh, it's like everything's out. Like monitors, like it's hard for people to find computer monitors, computer parts. Like I got a, I bought a new computer. I'm surprised it made it as fast as it did with everyone buying new shit. Like this is the time where people are sitting around their houses realizing uh, things that are screwed up, things they've always wanted to work on, things they've always wanted to add, and now we're seeing a lot of things like gym equipment. You know. Like that's the a scarcity. It's taken so long for all the gym equipment to restock. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of nuts. Losing my mind. My uh, I hurt my hand. There's a there's a name for it. I haven't had it properly diagnosed, but there's some sort of like thumb thing that you can get where just putting pressure on it, like doing bench press, even though you're not using your thumb, uh, you'll get this pain like right here. I haven't had it formally diagnosed, but I've like I've taken about two months off of lifting now to like hopefully let it heal. Uh, I have used a uh, what do you call it uh, a brace? I got one of those like thumb braces, and then uh, I've been putting like some CBD on it for the last month. Uh, hopefully, I'm I'm gonna start Monday. I've been like testing with push ups and like lifting some things because I it was to the point that I couldn't lift a you know a package from Amazon like without that hand hurting, so. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But fortunately, homeboy and, and his wife put together a gym, so we're going to put the rowing machine and the weights to good use. I really want to buy a rowing machine for my outdoor gym, but I do not want to spend $1,000 after I've spent all this money getting the other equipment. How are you? Uh, are you covering the gym? Yeah, I just talked to my contractor because I told him about like the concrete platform I wanted, but the rack is the only thing that's going to stay outside like all times so i need a cover for that and then i'm also going to put like an additional tarp over it once i'm done okay the the main like canopy that i'm adding is mostly for when it's time to work out the sun will be shining and that metal is going to get so damn hot i'll literally I, like i won't be able to lift i'll probably yeah. burn myself yeah um, down so in florida fuck okay. yeah the main canopy is for <clears throat> the shade and then the secondary use is to keep rain off. And then I'm going to cover it with another tarp. How are you liking Florida? Dude, I love, I am so shocked how, at how much I love it in Miami. I never would have thought I'd like South Florida this much. Cause I was in, <clears throat> I was in New Jersey, like 25 minute drive to Hoboken, which was then a 10 minute um, train into New York city. So that's really close to New York City, actually, um, for people that live in that area. To get into NYC in, in like 30 minutes, it's like mm -hmm. super, super fast. So, and I, I hate big cities. Like, for the longest time, like Chicago was way too big of a city for me. Like, even when you walk down in like the city area, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of suburbs in Chicago or whatever. It's just when you start driving down there, it just stresses me the fuck out. Um, were you? For, were you, did you play for the Bears? No. Okay. I'm just saying because I I'm a Midwest kid. Okay. Gotcha. Um. I played for Green Bay though. Mm hmm. Um, that place was so boring. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, being in New York City was like super super fun. Like I I found the pros that like made me really like New York City. Like, you know, in, like some anime where they have like the the rice balls. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it's like kind of like the triangular ones mm -hmm. with the little piece of seaweed underneath. Yep. Like if I wanted to go to a rice ball restaurant where they had like meats and cheeses inside of the rice ball, I was in New York City. I could get that. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Ivan Ramen, which he's arguably like one of the most famous like ramen chefs in the entire world, has like two restaurants in New York City. Went there. Like that was my favorite thing was like any type of weird niche thing I could find it in that city. But the shit I didn't like was like going in the subway and I'm not a germaphobe whatsoever. Like Corona has kind of made everyone a germaphobe <laughs> recently. Um, but like when I would ride in the subway, Oh my God, I wouldn't touch anything. I, I again, like I don't really give a shit about germs that much. Like, I'm not like a freak about washing my hands or using hand san sanitizer every time I see it, which I know some people are, but like as soon as I would get off the subway, I finally bought like a bottle of Purell. I would just squirt that in my hand and like No, I get it. There's like it. a it so gross. There's a subtle warm piss smell there uh, that is in the subway yes. system. And then Especially <laughs> especially in Chinatown, I hate to say it. If you, oh god, Chinatown is gr like grimy. It is. I, it's cool. It's cool. It Don't is. get me wrong. It's, yes. I went to some of the Chinese like bakeries and like beauty shops that they have. That shit was cool. They they were selling like hundred year old aged ginseng roots. Jesus. Like Christ. they have some weird stuff there. Like very like voodoo-y type stuff. <laughs> I remember I was streaming one one time walking through Chinatown. And I, when I had my camera, I had like a little mini. It wasn't really a selfie stick. It was like a mini tripod, but I would like hold it out. And they're like, they're like, no, no phone, no phone, no video recording. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, really? I need to buy shit from here. Apparently, that's that's that would have <laughs> yeah. been my. <laughs> yeah, I want to like, what can't I get on camera? Tell me, please. Mm -hmm. So I can buy it and then put it on camera. Yeah. I um. What had you in New York? I was playing for the Giants. Oh shit! Okay. So I was there. I was there, I got signed Jan 1, 2019, and then I was there all the way until, like, essentially September 1st. So, that was, it was Giants before the Dolphins. Got it. I was with the Giants all off-season. Like, all preseason off-season. Were the Giants your first pro signing? The, um, my first preseason game I ever played in was, uh, for the Ravens. Oh, that's and right, you did play for the Baltimore Ravens. That was just for one preseason game, though. Like, that was a favor that the special teams coach was doing for me, and I was kind of doing him a favor by playing as well because I was resting his uh, veteran long snapper. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, mutually beneficial, which was really, really cool of him to do. Um, and then four weeks later, I got signed by the Green Bay Packers. That's and really then I sick. played four games for them. I played four games for them, and I was, I mean, basically going to play the rest of the season. And then <clears throat> uh, the very first practice back from our bye week, I got my right foot stepped on and broke my second metatarsal. Ooh. And that ended my season. That was on November 2nd. How long did, did that take to recover from? Yeah, take that bite, big boy. It was a big one. <laughs> it's okay. Take your time. Enjoy. I think I was sprinting again by March, which isn't that bad. When did you hurt? Get hurt? November second. Okay. Damn, that's a long so, time to recover. Like, it's a small little bone, but damn. Well, the I was very very lucky because um. It was a centimeter away from being a Liz Frank, um, fracture, which is like one of the most serious foot injuries you could get and require surgery, um. So I was a centimeter away from requiring surgery. And then, like, I think the recovery is, like, nine months for that one. So I got super, super lucky because all they did was throw me in a boot. And I was essentially pretty good until uh, physical therapy started. Ooh, I just... <laughs> and then when I could start lifting again, I went way too hard at first and, like, fucking strained, strained my back trying to deadlift. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm trying to focus on when I when I start on Monday is not going overboard, not doing it like I was doing it two months ago, and just taking it easy, making something nice happen. 
you gotta take it e like that's like some some people get impatient about it like my biggest advice is if you have stopped lifting for a while just go into it so slow and easy mm -hmm. absolutely i mean i i made as much as i'm nodding my head and saying that right now uh about a month ago i was like you know what i'm gonna try running like i can't use my hands that's fine let me run and i did three miles for the first time in seven years and that was really oh, stupid dude yeah i know you're gonna kill yourself it, it was it was dumb like i mapped out the I route i had it I, to, I would die if i tried to run three miles i can i don't i don't run anything more than like 400 yards or meters anymore like i'm purely sprinting <laughs> i can't do that shit. i i hate cardio i really do but i was like I need to do something. I've, I've worked really hard to get back in shape, to get on the wagon, and <laughs> it's been very difficult. You should just go to the field and do, like, 100-yard sprints. I should. I really should. Because it's 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 better for your joints, and it's more efficient, and it doesn't take as long. You'll burn the same amount of calories doing, like, 30 minutes of, like, hard-ass sprints that you would, like, doing, like, an hour and a half of running. Yeah. Jo jogging, rather. I always wanted one of those uh, sprinting parachutes. I would see them they in that. Really don't do that much. I've only used it a few <laughs> times, but like, it was very underwhelming. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, the thing is, is like, you think you would feel fast running with one, right? Like, you would look fast, so you would feel fast. Yeah, but it's literally dragging you down. I was, I was wondering if you would be able to keep enough grip on the ground with that pulling against you to still get a good workout. Like if you oh, could keep no, your feet no, you down, would, yeah. You have to still, yeah, you're not gonna fly away. Well, <laughs> I mean, it would be cool if you could, but no, no, like just that you have enough to really keep going and get a good workout, especially with like you have a wind pulling against you or some shit. But I, um, yeah, I. What was that? What was that catalog that used to have those? It was like some South Carolina oh, name uh, or something no, like that. It was, um, East Bay. Yes, East Bay. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep. I got my first pair of basketball shorts from East Bay. I remember it because I was in Iraq and I needed workout shit. I ordered shoes and, and shorts from East Bay. But yeah, that was, um, wow. So what do you, all right. So you've watched, you've watched that. What about TV shows? You binged anything? Recently. I don't think I've watched any shows recently, like binged. Um, I've seen The Office like all the way through, like probably six times now. Yep. Um, that's just a classic, essentially. I can. It's one of those shows where you can watch it, and even if you know every single joke in the episode, it's like it's the writing is just so good. It's I, still I funny. It. Yeah. It's so funny, and then also it's <clears throat> one of those things where I'll play it in the living room, but I'll be doing dishes. And I'll hear one joke or one gag, and I'll still like chuckle without watching it because, like, again, the writing is so good. But then when you're watching it, like, there's so much comedy that's on camera that you wouldn't miss yeah. otherwise. No, you know? no, absolutely. Um, my roommates will put The Office or uh, Parks and Rec in the background as I just need, something I to go. I need to watch Parks and Rec all the way through. My biggest advice for people who haven't seen The Office, if you really want to give it a chance, you you can watch it first episode all the way through, but if you want to just skip straight into kind of the story arc and the characters that will stay there the rest of the show, you should watch um, <clears throat> halfway through the second season. You it's should start there. You should start halfway through the second season and then go from there because that first season and a half, um, they're still like they're still trying to figure out which characters they're gonna keep. And then one of the characters, Kevin, the first three seasons doesn't even act like season seven Kevin at all. True. Like, at all. Yeah. He's like dumb as fuck the last couple seasons. The first couple seasons he's just like really dry sense of humor, boring guy. It's yep. weird how they all change, but you don't really notice it uh, your first walk watch through. What's the old guy's name? I can't remember his name. The Creed? creepy guy. Creed. Thank you. He's so yes. weird. He, he was actually uh, like a real life like rock star. Really? Yeah. Like he was in what? a band. 
I can't hold on. Let me look this up. That's crazy. You know, it's funny though. Like the, the Google thing, right? Like the other day I couldn't remember it and it was something really important with the conversation I was having. I was like, I can't fucking figure out who the old guy is, but I'm like, this guy looks like him. He reminds me of him. Um, do you remember the days? Like, I know you're a little younger than I am, but do you remember the days when like you didn't have the internet at your fucking fingertips? And, and so when someone would have like a little bit really, of knowledge, I didn't really know how to use it effectively. Yeah. Like, I remember those days. Like when someone, you'd be like, oh man, you know, you're talking about your favorite band and someone tells you this cool fact, like my buddy, my, my the guy you saw walk behind me a little bit ago, he um, he is a huge Nine Inch Nails fan, huge uh, Tool fan, and I learned a lot of like random facts from him when we first met. But that was like way before we all had Google on our phones. Like, and that, there's a comedian that has a really good joke about it. And he talks about how like you want to know like, what year did Bon Jovi's band start or some shit or when's Bon Jovi's birthday or something like that. And then you meet some woman and she tells you, and then she becomes your wife because she knew that little bit of information. Yeah. 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 <coughs> I just, on my whole life, like watching my mom would always like, give me shit, not give me shit for it. I don't know. This is like a weird thing to say, but oh, well, my family has told me, but they were like, my mom and dad were like we were never like uh as far as like school wise like as gifted as you were as far as like getting taught a concept and then grabbing it like that mm -hmm. um, and then also like as a kid i guess it was weird to them but like as a kid i really enjoyed watching like documentaries on like nature and all this shit i i still remember they thought it was so weird that i would watch like asian movies but mm -hmm. with subtitles and I'm not talking like anime. I'm talking like Chinese, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon shit, but with subtitles. Yes. And they, I remember, I remember what started it was the original Iron Chef on Food Network was literally only subtitles. And I, I honestly credit that. I credit Iron Chef um, as to why I'm such like I was such I am was. It was more apparent when I was a kid. Such a great reader. I would tear through books. It's because if you want to watch Iron Chef and know what's going on as a kid, you got to learn how to read fast. You uh, because they're going through they're going through the subtitles like crazy. You know, Steve has like a similar origin story on that, right? Why? Like his his whole thing is that he he credits Final Fantasy as being one of the reasons that he's such an avid reader or oh, so, yeah. as such a skilled reader. Um. Yeah. I'll be honest. I crippled myself, and I regret this. I've I've started reading a lot in the last couple of years. I I always have a book every night. I'm I'm, I'm laying in bed reading before bed. Uh, but w when I was younger, I was the kind of asshole that was like, I'm gonna only do cliff notes. Like I don't care as long as I can pass yeah. the test. That's all I cared about. Um, and I regret that. My my senior year, my my prof uh, not professor, fucking my teacher said re we were reading a. Uh, what is it? Catcher in the Rye, right? And he said, read oh, this book now. I love that book. Holy shit, that book. When I was in 11th grade, that shit spoke to me so much. So you say that. And one of the things he told us was read this 10 years from now. Because we just read it. And he said, read this 10 years from now. I regret not reading it because now I don't understand like necessarily you know, what, what would go into it if I did read it again. So I kind of want to see it and see if I'm like, oh, I see how 18-year-old Jared would have interpreted this shit, right? Yeah. But because I, I remember reading that, I was like, holy shit, this guy, like, I see his faults, like, in the book. But at the same time, like, you're right. Everybody is a fucking phony. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole thing through the whole book is everyone, everyone is phone, phony except for me. Yeah, it's I, I, I think I'll read it. I'll see if I experience that. But I, I regret one thing. If I ever if I ever make the mistake of procreating, I'm going to tell my kid read now just do it you'll appreciate it it'll help yeah. you with all kinds of things uh, I, um my when we Haley and i got the condo in michigan when we were living in michigan <clears throat> we had this office room and i was like you know what because i remember i used to read so much that it got to the point where in middle school my mom was like we're gonna have to like go to the library because i can't afford to buy you all these books that you read because i would like, get a new book and be done in like three or four days like you know, like hey can we go back into where whatever the city was tulsa and go to barnes and noble and buy some more books and obviously amazon wasn't a thing as big as a thing like 20 right years ago or whatever so she's like i can't keep spending money on all these books 
And my thing when I was younger is like I wanted to keep the book after I was done with it. So like I hated the idea of the library because I would give it back. Mm -hmm. So I bought a bookshelf from IKEA. Tall motherfucker, like nine feet tall, four or five shelves. And I just went on Amazon and I started ordering book sets of every single book that I've read at one point in my life. Um, like my fit, I started with my favorites and then it got very expensive because, like, mm -hmm. I mean, my mom had a point like, books are fucking expensive. Like, like, hardback Harry Potter. I was gonna ask if you had read Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah course uh the full set of harry potter hardback is 135 dollars like oh, yeah shit. oh wait this is really pretty wait what oh the new artwork there's like tons of different artwork for this yeah they've come out with some oh, new ones wait, this is fake oh that's a fake pottery barn thing oh oh that is too okay fuck. <laughs> anyway um but yeah i started just ordering book sets of like all my favorite books um and I mean, now the the one shelf that we got is more than halfway full um, because I want to, down the road, whenever I have kids, is like, I want, I never want them to not have something to read. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with filling it up with my favorite shit. Um, obviously, when they're like really young and starting to read, they won't be able to read it. But like all of my favorite books mm -hmm. are there, like Harry Potter, the name of uh, the King Killer Chronicles, um, Air Gun series, Red Wall. <clears throat> I have like a bunch of like fantasy books because that's all I would read. Um, what did you think of the Aragon movie? When I was a kid, I loved it. Now, I haven't seen it in a while, but I could totally see how rewatching it and then like reading the book, how it was like a total piece of shit. Uh, but... My mom has ruined John Malkovich for me. She told me, uh, I remember her saying one time, like, John Bankovich is a shitty actor. And now every time I see him, I get what she's saying. And, like, the, I struggle. Like, the uh, what was that movie he was in? Red. Oh, Did you ever he, see Red? Was, was he, like, the... The uh, villain. Say, oh, he was the villain? Yeah. <clears throat> like I said, I haven't seen it in a long time. So when I, when I see him, like, I saw him in Red, and he played this funny character, and I liked him. But there was, like, still this little bit of, I get what my mom was talking about kind of thing. Yeah. And it and it's ruined it. And I hate when people like. It's one of the reasons I don't like reading reviews before I go see a movie. Like, I don't want to hear anyone's opinion because if I hear it, I'm going to be then applying Thank that. You, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to be looking for it, and it has that chance, the propensity to taint the movie for me, and yeah. I don't like that. Oh, I read uh, a review on um, Tom Segura's new special, and I I didn't realize what i was reading until i started reading it and i was like fuck and i still can't bring myself to watch it let me tell you i laughed my fucking ass off it's amazing okay. it is one of his best that he's done it, it is hands down and i, I just watched bert kreischer's new special too um his is going downhill yeah his, his was his, his was is, he's, he's hitting a slump yeah his was a and like but tom's tom's was fresh fresh fire it was beautiful it was good it was hilarious i like how relaxed tom is during his sets oh yeah you know who tom reminds me of in a way is mooten do you see you it see that he yeah was, dude mooten was making me laugh really really hard <laughs> i messaged i dm'd him because steven was afk for a little bit and he was just talking to chat holy shit dude mooten had me in stitches he was saying the most <laughs> he was saying shit that chat was just roasting him for but like what did he say last night? He goes, it was, hey, chat. Where are all the white women at? <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're not supposed to say that on Twitch, but, like, <laughs> that was fucking funny. Like, everybody was pepe mizing him, but that shit was funny. <laughs> Wooten's hilarious. I think that there's a certain amount of, like, edgy humor that we need to be okay with. Like there's a you ever read those Tucker Mac Max books books books, no, uh right, <laughs> the precious, the uh there's the Tucker Tucker Max book um I hope they serve beers in hell and it was like one of his sequels or whatever and it's just all of his dumb stupid bro sex stories and and crazy shit right 
Uh, but there's one story where he's talking about his best friend who's uh, he calls Sling Blade. And they're they're like they show up to this restaurant middle of the night, some fast food place. And the guy is like, fuck this. And he starts walking through the line and it's a bunch of black people. And he says, excuse me, hungry white person coming through and, you know, pushes his way to the front of the line. And like everyone there has good humor about it and laughs and whatever. Um, but I feel like that's a joke that you really couldn't get away with nowadays. At all. I was listening to. If you listen to Dane Cook's special when he's talking about public bathrooms, you you can't have that joke in your set anymore, or at least half the joke. What's some his... of the words he some of the words he says like you you just can't say it anymore, and it's fucking hilarious because it's it all of it is like it's not even like oh the idea of what he's saying is true. It's like shit like that literally happens in public bathrooms, and it's fucking hilarious that he like called it out, but the words he used. Mm -hmm. you actually cannot say anymore like well, he's using like slurs basically not to invoke the name of joe rogan so quickly but joe rogan had uh, a <laughs> how long did we make it how long is this it's been going? uh one hour two minutes nine seconds oh, okay you made it you made it an hour you so an hour. i'll give you that much so joe had a uh, uh what's his name <laughs> uh robert downey jr came on this podcast and I haven't seen that yet, but I bet that was a really good one. It was a really good one. And, like, Robert's a, a huge Joe fan, apparently. And, really? uh, yeah, but so Robert was in uh, Tropic Thunder, right? And you've seen mm -hmm. Tropic Thunder, I assume. I I watched this tidbit of the interview, yeah. Yeah. And you can tell the viewers, yeah. Yeah, so, like, he asked the question, like, could that be done today? And I think that's a really valid question. Like, could you get away with Tropic Thunder, like Robert Downey Jr.'s character in particular, right? I'm a dude pretending to be a dude, pretending to be another dude, and he's doing blackface. He's doing the most highbrow blackface. <laughs> I mean, it's like, that's Robert Downey Jr. That's, mm -hmm. we've established that in the movie. It's like, okay, he's a white guy. He's dressing up as a black guy. Yep. And he looks like a black guy. Like, absolutely. Uh <laughs> your, average, your average white person would be like, no, that's not Robert Downey. And then he dons the voice and he keeps it up and all that other stuff. Yeah. But like, no, genuinely, I don't think it's like a, whoa, where's the line kind of stupid conservative thing. Like, it's a serious thing. Like, where is the line? Because I feel we can delve into that kind of humor and it still be done in good faith. I don't think that we shouldn't avoid consciousness of when that humor can cause harm. Absolutely. But I think that we enable a certain amount of harm if we over restrict yeah i mean even uh, blackface is like up there with no no things mm -hmm. uh, as far as media goes but even steve carell even steve carell said that a lot of the get uh, a lot of the gags on the office he doesn't think they'd be able to get away with now so he's like really thankful that they filmed it when they did which they didn't stop filming that long ago yeah no it wasn't what the office in like 2012 or something that was only eight years ago which is crazy because it seems like way more recent. Actually, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> uh, the Office Wikipedia. I need a. I need a, speaking of Joe Rogan. I need a Jamie for this show. I I need someone to pull shit up. I think you're capable. I think you're capable. <laughs> uh, final episode date was May 16, 2013. Okay. Cool. Damn, I wasn't far <sighs> off. I did. Did you have an iPod when you were a kid? Yeah. I uh I got one my, of the. My first one was an iPod. Uh, nano Minis? nano's the ones with no screen yeah nanos had no screen minis had the small screen oh then i think it, no, no 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 i thought nano had the small screen was it yeah i had that I okay you're right yeah nano second generation ah oh, damn that was such a cool looking thing yeah i think i think i had no uh, i think i had the fifth gen i had the fifth generation um so I had the yeah, dude. I listened to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, like so many times in eighth grade. Is that your favorite? Favorite album of all time? Band. Or, uh, I know this is like a weird way to phrase it, but like if there was one live show I could see with my dad, my dad's still alive, by the way, but like father son type shit like, yeah yeah but there's one band i could go see live with my dad it, now it'd be like red hot chili peppers for sure no shit the, yeah. the chili peppers my dad, are my favorite my, my dad just sent me uh my dad just they're, they're cleaning out the basement at my house in michigan uh that i grew up in for a little bit and um 
my dad sent me the ticket stub of my first like concert I went to, um, which was the Misfits 25 year reunion. Um, no shit. Because my dad, my dad was like a punk rocker back in the 80s. Um, so he listened to them a bunch, and so it was the 21st anniversary, and they were playing in Oklahoma City on Thanksgiving. And one of my very best friends, Spencer, uh, my dad, he was like a second, like a, like a brother to me. Mm-hmm. Um, my dog smells my food. He's fucking scratching at the door. <laughs> Little bitch. Um, and so my dad took me and my dad took Spencer and we all went to the Diamond Ballroom in Oklahoma City. And that was my first like legit concert. But that was also the very first fight I ever got in. Like, Wait, how old were you? Real fight. I was 14 years old. <laughs> Do tell. Let's hear it. All right. So we get there and it's like, again, it's like my first like rock show. And it by no means is it, a, it's not a theater. Um, it's literally like a warehouse out in the middle of fucking nowhere in Oklahoma City called the Diamond Ballroom, which has been there forever. I guess a lot of different bands have played there. Um, so. The opening bands go on there's like one really emo band that people weren't really vibing with and then the next band <clears throat> um every song that they played in their set the drummer took off another piece of clothing and the final song he took off the sock that was on his dick and played naked like that it was like the level of punk rock yeah right? yeah 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 so like <laughs> and then at the end he literally did a helicopter on the stage yeah so like we're and everyone's like holy shit we're like oh. <laughs> it was funny as fuck um and then the second the the band that played right before the misfits was this like they did i it was so weird they were really good it was like a really young front man they did like a hootie and the blowfish like punk cover it was sick but anyway the misfits start playing and my dad and i are like my dad and spencer and i are like inching our way up to the front of the venue i think we're like if you've gone to concerts, it's like we were about three bodies away from the front fence. Okay. So we're relatively close. Um, and we had been talking with this this couple and their friend that was in front of us. We were commenting on random shit and about – so we were three from the front and then three bodies to the side of the pit, the mosh pit. So all of a sudden – we're looking like we kind of look forward and someone comes in front of the couple that uh were in front of us and it's this chick and she has her hand over her face like this and they're like and like i couldn't really hear what was going on and then all of a sudden she takes her hand away and her nose is like i mean i think it might have been broken like blood everywhere and they're like what the fuck happened to you blah 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 blah, blah." because that was another person that was with them like are you okay are you okay um and she's like there are these two guys in the pit that are like going out and like purposely punching girls and shit like that. And I'm like, oh, like that's really weird. Again, never really been to a punk show. Don't really know how much. Oh, wait, you're 15? You said? 14. 14, okay. Yeah. And um, so my dad's next to me. <laughs> and I, again, I don't even know how it happened because we're in the middle of a punk rock show. Like it's loud as fuck. There's the pit is in our periphery. So like we're seeing people move like crazy. Like, Sometimes we get bumped from, like, a huge group of people bumping in the edge of the mosh pit. And, again, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, um, I'm, like, standing here, and I look, and my dad is 6'5", like, 320 pounds. Like, he's a big motherfucker. He was in alignment in college. Um, And all of a sudden, I see this little guy, like, his arm is around my dad's neck and if my dad's head is right here this little guy's head is right here like choking him out he's like on his back just out of fucking nowhere just up here i'm like what the fuck i'm like what the fuck and then i like i'm kind of looking and my dad has a, a, a guy is in front of him and he has one arm like this and one arm like this holding him here and then that guy's like choking him so he's starting to fall backwards and like again <laughs> It's happening so fast, I kind of just, like, black out, and I take, like, a little crow hop, and I just go, <laughs> boom, like that. And, like, if my dad's head was here, I just, I'm, like, whoo, right to the side where this guy was. And the only thing I really remember after that was I 
boom, made contact, like, right here in the guy's nose. I watched his eyes roll back in the back of his head, and then he just dropped off my dad. And my dad, the guy that he had his arms on, he, like, reached under him lower and literally just threw him in the pit and got him off of us. Wait, and this was out of nowhere? They just jumped on this dude? So that was my perspective of it. But when I talked to my dad is that he finally saw those two guys punching that girl, another girl. And he put his hand on this guy's shoulder and he goes, Hey man, if you hit another girl, we're going to have a problem. And my dad doesn't really do shit like that. So like for him to do that, like he probably really thought it was a problem. Yeah, like absolutely. Was for hitting. Yeah. Girls. And so he's like, Hey man, if you do that, we're going to have a problem. And with the other arm, so, like, th he couldn't really do anything with this arm because my dad has his hand on it. With the other arm, he, like, swung at my dad. So that's why my dad's hands were like this. And then his buddy came up behind my dad and started, like, trying to choke him out. Dude. So I just fucking clocked his ass. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And I, like, <laughs> I, I didn't scream. But I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I just sprint to the back of the venue, like, ditching my dad, like, hope you got it. But I just had a boom like that. Just kind of, see ya. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> my, my adrenaline had never been pumped like that in my life. And I was in the back of the venue. I was literally like, <laughs> like shaking, <laughs> shaking like a leaf. I went and bought water. I was like trying to calm down. No, I finally found him. I finally found him. I know what you mean. Um, When I was in, <laughs> I had been in a few stupid like fights, like really dumb. Like I really don't want to fight. Please don't. But I'm going to like swing at you if you swing at me. But shit. when I was in, um, I was in band once. So we're sitting on the stage in the on, on, on auditorium. Man. Yeah, yeah. So were you, the were you, uh, were you a were you a drummer? You it, a drummer? No, no. I I wanted to be, but the teacher wouldn't let me because she didn't like Damn me. But that that's a different story. No, the um. So I'm uh, I'm, I was playing French horn because we're this is after the marching season. So I, I switch over to French Damn. horn. Listen, motherfucker, <laughs> French horn is one of the most beautiful fucking instruments. <laughs> I know. So uh, but. French horns, like you have the the big U that is the uh you know the the band right. I'm about here, right at the bottom, and the drummers are back here, right. So I'm sitting there, and there's an autistic kid who's like really good at the trumpet, and he um he uh like very very autistic. Careful, careful. And, I'm joke spotting you. I'm no, joke -spotting no, you. no 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 jokes about him. Like he's okay, very autistic. Okay. Uh, and they're teasing him because Patrick would get really upset if you said cuss words in front of him. Because uh, he was very literal, very, you know, and uh, and he, stop that. And uh, they would laugh and then they would continue to do it to piss him off. And I turned around and I said, guys, leave him the fuck alone. And and Mike, this guy, Mike, he takes this uh, xylophone mallet that's like really malleable, but it has the hard ball at the end of it. And he starts flicking it and he looks at one of his trumpet buddies and he says, oh, hey, TJ, you think that would hurt? And he flicks it in the air and he says, hey, Keith, you think that would hurt? And he flicks it in the air. And I turn around, and this girl, uh, my friend Sierra, was sitting next to me. I said, I swear to God, if he hits me with that, I'm going to punch him in the face. I was not a fighting kind of did person. You, did you say it loud enough for him to hear it? No, I just said it to her. I said, if he hits me, I'm going to punch him in the face. I'm not a fighter. I hated fighting. I had so much anxiety anytime someone tried I to fight at it. me. I, I hated it. it the moment. Uh, that, them, like, trying to goad me with, like, playback in my head for, like, weeks, and it, like, really yep. upset me. So yeah. this motherfucker. Ahead, I am sitting there like this. So you, when you sit with your French horn, you sit like you have your one hand on the the, the curve right here. Mm -hmm. And then you have your other hand inside the bell. I'm sitting there. Like I have it on my knee. <laughs> yes, like a woman. You put your hand up in there. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there. And then I feel the strike. And it's the most reactive moment, I think, of my life. Like the moment I feel the strike hit my shoulder, I drop the instrument and I turn. And I just swing and I connect in the most Mike oh, Tyson beautiful fashion. I hit him in the chin. Like, oh God! And when he falls connect, back. It feels bad. It does, and so it feels so bad when you don't. Connect. I, we'll tell. I'll talk, tell you about my dreams in a second. But like when I <laughs> when I hit him, there's one of those giant bass drums, and he goes right into it. It's like a fucking cartoon, except he didn't like, go through it. it no, not through, through it. it. He, oh. But he just lands into it. But he stumbles your, back. Your parents probably thank you for that because they were gonna have to pay. Yeah. For that shit. So I, I'm losing my, I like instantly panic because it, it goes from like, I just defended someone myself moment to, oh my God, he's coming back for me. And so I don't hit him because I'm trying to hurt him. I hit him because I'm scared. And so I punch him <laughs> in the face again <laughs> and he falls back and I'm like, oh no, he's getting up. So I tackle him and I get on him and then we get pulled apart and I am 
the adrenaline is so i start like you cry? Are you an angry crier? borderline crying like my my lips tre crier. trembling when I was younger yep. when i was younger i was an angry crier i would well up it was so embarrassing thank god i've like defeated that now but like holy shit that was embarrassing in middle school yeah it was like <laughs> The lip was going, and, like, I got pulled out by this guy named Dominic. He was, like, this big fucking jacked uh, drummer, and he pulls me out, and he's like, it's okay. Mrs. The teacher actually called my mom to say, you won't believe what your son did, and my thought, mom thought <laughs> my mom thought I was in trouble, which I was. Don't get me wrong. I got suspended totally for it. But, um, <laughs> Zero tolerance bullshit. Yep. But uh, Mrs. Dean actually said, like, Jared did something really good today, which is funny for a teacher to say about yeah. someone, you know beating someone's there, ass there, there's some there's some teachers who they get it very few it seems like but there are some teachers that get it the best part were the ladies coming up to me because mike was a, a relatively handsome popular guy but he was also a prick and so there were a lot of women that came up to Aren't me from the all... band and said thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. i uh the last fight i got in where punches were thrown were uh was uh Fourth of July, twenty seventeen. Ooh, not long ago. Um, it was my ex from college. She had a little brother who was dating a girl um, from their hometown, and um, he was eighteen or nineteen at this point, and I was uh, twenty-two. Mm -hmm. I think it was twenty-three at that point. Ex's yeah, little brother. My ex's little brother. Okay. Okay. And so her family, I loved her family. Everybody in Becca's family loved Pierce's girlfriend's family. And they were super nice, super rich. Uh, so they invited us all to their like cabin up north, which they had like a fucking compound. They had like four cabins all in one area on one part of this lake. Like three jet skis, two different boats. Like it was fucking sick. Okay. So like, all weekend kind of tensions like tensions like started mounting like if you know anything about becca's little brother it's like he was the baby of the family two older sister girls and then pierce so he was the baby and he was the boy the finally the boy the <laughs> baby boy. yeah okay, so he literally yeah. he was so fucking spoiled he threw a fit if he didn't get what he wanted so we're playing beach like sand volleyball basically um uh, the first two days of the weekend it's fourth of july weekend so we were there for like four or five days um and like his girlfriend would fuck up like miss the ball or like not have it bounce where she wanted mm -hmm. it and literally like day two day three he was like dude what the fuck are you doing blah, 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 like yelling at his girlfriend like dude he finally like he was we were all drunk everyone was fucking drunk and we were playing volleyball but he literally started he he legit looked at her and was like kaylee fuck you like he said I, that he said, he said fuck, fuck you. you he was like you're trying to like lose like fuck oh you. girlfriend's dad was there girlfriend's mom was there girlfriend's little his girlfriend's like yes they were at their place we're all playing beach volleyball together what and he said that fuck? and and becca my ex at the time was fucking she was a little firecracker like but she got to be like super mean to me that's why i finally broke up with her but like she let him fucking have it she's like you're so fucking disrespectful for saying that in front of your girlfriend's parents like they are the ones that invited us here he like threw this temper tantrum like went off walked like two miles down the road in the middle of the country like fucking out of nowhere okay that kind of that was like the real big like kind of blow up uh -huh. and then the next day was actual fourth of july so like there's already weird tension going on. Like everyone, literally everyone is having a great time with each other, except for Pierce, who's like throwing little hissy t temper tantrums, like 19 year old spoiled. Pierce boy is look. a really temper tantrum kind of name, right? P E A C or P E A R C E. Not mm -hmm. even like Pierce, like an arrow Pierce is like spelled a, a spoiled way in a way. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway. So it's fourth. It's actually Fourth of July, and like, oh, we're gonna go to the sandbar that literally everyone on the lake goes to. It's a huge party. It'll be so much fun. So we 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 boat out there. We're driving our boat out there, and uh, we we inflate like a floating beer pong table, and <laughs> it 
It's me and Becca's little sister who is the middle child and I fucking love her to death. Like she's the sweetest girl in the whole world. Like she's my favorite person in the entire family. It's me and, and her against Pierce and Becca's mom. And they're killing us in beer pong. And then they should have had the game winning shot, but I called elbow. On wait, Pierce. wait, what's elbow? So like Oh, his elbow across the plane? His elbow so like the very back part of your side of the beer pong table mm -hmm. your elbow can't cross that like okay yeah too. yeah so like okay. you have to stay behind this plane yep and he crossed over when he shot and i'm like elbow and even his mom agreed like that was fucking elbow again we're in the water and drunk like it's elbow like whatever it wasn't a big deal it was yeah like, we had, hadn't even been out there in an hour okay i call elbow he that shot doesn't count and then it's me and becca's little sister and we sink both of them so then we get the balls back so then we sink the last two and we fucking win. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he just throws another temper tantrum. He calls me. The it's F fucking word. beer bong. He calls what? me the fucking F slur. He goes, you're a fucking F slur. Like what the fuck? And his mom is like trying to cool him off, like fucking pulling him to the other side of the boat. I'm like, I'm like, I turned to Becca's little sister. I'm like, he's going fucking crazy this weekend. Like what is wrong with him? And I'm like, him saying that was like <gasps> you, you kind of get that thing in your chest that's like building up i'm like oh my god like th this is upsetting me like he's a grown when i'm 23 and he's 19 it's like oh he's a grown man he shouldn't be acting like this right but i'm like he should not be acting like this and he's like saying like really really mean nasty things like my buddies and i would be like oh dude fuck you uh you're such a bitch blah blah mm -hmm. blah not a big deal he literally straight up called me the f slur like with some malice like yeah. yeah 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 like it was uncalled for, like just straight up, completely uncalled for. And um, fuck that. I calm down from that. I go and talk to a couple other people that we were at the boat with, some new people. And then I climb in the boat and I want to lay down for a little bit. And like Becca is sitting on the like the driver's seat, captain seat type area. And then Pierce's girlfriend is laying on the back. And then Pierce is sitting in another chair. And he was being mean to his girlfriend again. Not like terrible, but like saying shit. And Becca, my ex, like, stepped in to say something. And he, like, said something like, shut up, you fat cow, to Becca, my girlfriend at the time. And I'm not, like, all about, like, fucking, like, chivalry type stuff. And I go, hey, Pierce, I know she's your sister, but she's also my girlfriend. Don't fucking talk to her like that ever, like, ever again. Don't ever say anything like that ever again. He goes, what the fuck are you going to do? And I'm like, Pierce, really, just don't say anything like that. And he stands up, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, and he goes, what the fuck are you going to do? And I'm like, are you, like, uh, are you really like, checking me right now? And I'm like, I'm like, all right, find out. And I jump over the side of the boat, and we're in water. And it's so clumsy, too. Like, it was such an ugly fight. Like, I wish we had been on dry land, kind of, because, like, at this point, he fucking deserved it. And we're, like, sloshing through the water, like, kind of running at each other. And we were just, like, <laughs> again, it's one of those, like, we're drunk on a sandbar. We're just, like, like, just swinging. <laughs> Nothing is connecting, really. Like, like we kind of slap each other in the face a little bit, like, back and forth. We get, like, maybe, like, three strikes in a piece. <laughs> and then we get broken up. We get broken up from boats down the way. We get broken up from the, the men in the family. And, and it's, like... <laughs> Becca's mom was like, that's it. We're going home. <laughs> like, we can't be out here anymore. And Jesus. the whole boat ride, not like, not like. So basically, when we're on the boat ride back, literally, Pierce's girlfriend's mom comes up to me and she's like, fucking deserved it. Like, thank you. Somebody had to do it. <laughs> it and like, it's not like her husband was going to do anything, right? And she was like, he, he fucking had a oh, comment. Man. Blah, blah, blah. His mom told me, thank you. His girlfriend told me thank you. Becca told me thank you. Becca's little sister told me thank you. The only person who didn't say thank you was his dad. And you know what he fucking told me like two hours later? I, I'm out on the I'm out on the dock trying to cool down still because my adrenaline still because I have to look at this motherfucker. Again, I'm not a fighter like at all. Like mm -hmm. I've gotten in like three fights total, and you've heard about two of them. Like yep. all through college, I never really got into a fight ever. Um his dad looks at me and i'm like i'm like his dad walks up to the the little dock area and i go hey man um 
like I'm really sorry that that happened. Like I don't like doing that or fighting. Um, and he goes, I know Tabor, but you know that's my son. And I go, I go, yeah, I get that's your son, but like I've explained to you multiple times what he was saying to your daughter, my girlfriend, your daughter. Like it's not like that was some random person he was yelling at and calling a fat cow and like really disgusting names. Like it was also your daughter. Like eventually I like dropped back the whole my girlfriend thing is like he was saying that to your daughter. What do you say to that? To, he just was like shaking his head in disbelief, like he's my he's my boy, he's my son. Oh, you know <laughs> he's like, struggling with some shit inside, like he wants it's some weird machismo thing. And I'm like, Martin, get the fuck over it. Like he was being horrible to everybody this weekend, and then he finally directed it towards Becca. And like, I'm not gonna fucking stand there. Like, like it's not my job to defend him from his girlfriend. He's not doing any phys- anything physical to his girlfriend. He's just being a fucking asshole. So, like, I'm not going to step in and say something. Hey, Pierce, you shouldn't say that to your girlfriend. Like, that's right. kind of not my place, especially when both of her parents and both of his parents were there watching it happen. Like, mm-hmm. not my place. He says shit to the middle sister. Again, not my fucking place. Say so sh- shit to my fucking girlfriend. Yeah, no, but, no, that's absolutely, sorry, yeah. Like, fuck. I mean, there's got to be a line somewhere. I'm not going to let you walk all over everyone. No. But, yeah, fuck that. No, I don't think you did anything wrong. Like, I mean... <sighs> I need. I gotta go get some more refreshments. That he. Yep, yep. <laughs> While he's gone, let me just say, guys. So, I like the idea of trying to stay as healthy as possible, especially with not even, uh, not being able to work out as regularly because of my hand. So, with that, uh, my best buddy over there. You can't see him, but he, uh, he found these blue moon, light. Like a blue moon that's not going to have the full punch and pack calorically that your typical blue moon would. That's an exciting yeah. thought, isn't it? No, it's not. Blue moon like sky fucking blows. It tastes like almost like a truly or a claw with like a mild citrus flavor. Like there's a little bit of beer essence to it. I actually think that warmer it's better. Like, if it's ice cold, it's really thin and tastes like a claw. But as it's gotten warmer, it's gotten slightly better. Then again, I also switched to whiskey because... Um, because pee, actually. Yeah, no, pee away. I switched to whiskey, and so after a couple shots of this, it now tastes a lot better. That could be the other thing. I don't know. But uh, so either way, I will say that I'm, I'm on the fence about this because I love Blue Moon, but this doesn't taste like a Blue Moon. It also says... Um, brewed with tangerine peel and i don't think typical blue moon is tangerine i think it's typical orange right so i don't know but we're drinking it anyway because waste not want not am i right that was kind of like an ad wasn't it like pepsi the taste of a new generation pepsi kendall jenner ended racism and with what what was that other that that lady's name do you remember that cr- really cringe pepsi commercial yeah kendall jenner was it kendall jenner okay the one yeah. where there was like a police line and she handed one a, a pepsi and <laughs> then they all held hands and <laughs> fucked each other off yeah i remember that that was uh oh that was a really cringe meme fuck uh yeah oh so you were talking about the fight so you know that feeling of you like running through water to get to this guy to fight him right so it that felt like a dream it felt like it does in the dream it's horrible that's how my fight dreams are it's like my mind saying you don't really want to hurt these people and because I, I don't i'm not a fighter but like yeah exactly it's like you punch at them and it's like a bullet through water like it's just not effective at all and uh that's the sensation of Anytime I, I my mind tries to process conflict, like physical conflict, it's always through some sort of like I can't make contact with this person in an effective Honestly, way. It's a good deterrent because if I was beating people's asses in my dreams, I'd probably get a little self confident. <laughs> so it's probably good that like we all have the same dream where we can't run fast, we can't punch fast. <laughs> Your mind keeping you in check, like yeah. easy Haas, hold on. No. Chill out. Chill out. <laughs> Anybody can get knocked out. Yep. What if that's some like evolutional 
like survival mechanism is like your dream yeah. self-consciously telling you like uh, you might want to not you might not want to challenge everyone around you so what's it like i i've asked you this before but since we're, we're on a recording now what's it like being a member of a national football league team like do you feel cool going into that that locker room does it feel exciting exhilarating does it feel like going to work like at an office job like what does it feel like to walk in and get ready for game day i mean it's work oh game day is completely different than uh day during the week completely different let's do day during the week let's do it the, the more monotonous day during the week i mean it's a different work day but like when that's all you know which is football's all i know basically is like it feels like a nine to five some days a lot of days I realize it isn't, and I'm very, very thankful because I don't want to sit at a desk, like, not voluntarily because <laughs> I sit at a desk all day right now during quarantine. But, um, like, an office job just sounds like fucking torture to me. Uh, that's why I want to do shit with, like, esports or, like, I don't even know what. Haley's getting her real estate license right now, so we could probably start um, not totally flipping houses, but, like, making improvements and then renting them out, that type of thing. Hell yeah. That's what we, what we want to do after I'm done with football. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> the season. It was wake up at 6 a.m., get into the building by 6 30, 6 45. Um, and I would, the best thing you can do for yourself as an athlete is take care of your body because that is your equipment. Yeah. Whereas, like, like a computer engineer, like, you have to have a laptop, you have to have a PC, all that shit. Like, my body is my bulldozer my it's your body, money maker my, it's my, yeah my tool bag basically um so i would get in 6 45 and do like this i have like i think i have it written down it's just kind of this regiment this routine that i do in the morning is just to loosen up wake up a little bit more um where is it come on fuck i can't find it fuck never mind um <laughs> but it's like a 30 minute routine that i would do most mornings i would say nine out of ten mornings um i would do and the days i didn't do it even though i knew i would and still wouldn't do it i would feel like dog shit um and the days that i did it i would feel normal <laughs> and like functional but towards the end of a 16 week season like it gets hard to wake up it gets really really hard to get warmed up it's like normally when you warm up like you feel great you feel fine you can do whatever but like at the end of a season it just takes that much longer to get warmed up that's interesting um, like like it's it's mental right like you're having trouble getting there it's mental and then some of it's physical it's like my shins have never been abused in my entire life the way that they were abused this this year like i was getting stepped on like fucking crazy i had a i had a bump on my shin that even after the season, I think it still took a month and a half to go away. Yeah. Like just getting, uh, just getting cleated, just getting cleated right here. And then not only are they cleating you, but they're also stepping down too. So it hits you and then it drags down. So, and, and the guy next to me is like a 260 pound tight end. So like, it's not a light foot that's hitting me real quick. It's he's, we're blocking. So what are you doing in that moment? Like, are you doing your long snap position or are you filling in another role for like practice team? No, I, I, I exclusively long snap. Um, so how are you getting cleated as a long snapper? I'm, I'm not a huge, <laughs> like knowledgeable football person. So like, are, um, is this just you running drills and like the, the center in front of you is coming at you? Well, I'm the center basically whenever, whenever it's punt, I'm the center. And so we have the guys who are across from us are trying to block it. They're trying to block the punt, right? So I have to snap it, and then I have to get my head up, and then everyone on my team has to block the blockers. So we have to keep the blockers from blocking the punt. So I have to snap, get my head up, and then go back and engage with somebody. Um, and they'll do all sorts of twists to, like, isolate me. They'll try to widen the edges to bring guys out so I'm more isolated, and then they'll flip, and they'll switch, and they'll do all sorts of shit. So my head has to come up. Can I, I can like, I'll basically go through what we're looking at and it's going to sound like French, but I'm just like telling you like what it is. Like, you're yeah, yeah. Understand this, right. So like basically 
your basic punt block formation is four by four. There's four guys on the right. I'm the middle of the formation on punt. Right. So if there's four guys to the right of me and four guys to the left, it's a four by four, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it's an overload left, that means there's five people on the left, three people on my right. Okay. Okay. When there's five people on the left or five people on the right, they can do things like widen the three out to make the the wing tackle and guard try to widen but instead of widening because the block formation is like a parabola and the punter is going straight through the parabola they don't need to widen to go get those guys as long as my wing tackle and guard go straight back the guys who are trying to block they have to come back in to try to block so it's like the guys who slip for a second and do widen out when they widen out the twists that the punt block team are going to be running are more effective so if they run a 5-3 twist where the 4 and the 5 come across, if if the five if only the 5 comes across, my right guard has to pick up the 5, and then I stay to the left and pick up the 4. But it's a 53, and then we look, and then the 5 and the 4 come over, I have to come over and pick up the 4, or else everything's all fucked up. Like... And then you get like seven boxes where it's three by three and there's one guy in the middle. He could be dropping back or he could be picking the side right before I snap it. You don't know if they have me timed up. You don't know if they've been watching my film to see like, oh, his uh, his right thumb like kind of waggles right before he snaps the ball or he widens his knees out right before he snaps the ball or he drops his butt down a little bit. So we can time it up right then. Um, they're watching film for all that shit. Um, yeah, I mean they're trying to just expose every single weakness. weakness yeah, have. yeah. So, so what's and it's all they, they. I mean, you can do a fucking you can do a fucking nine box where it's six and three, or it's six and two, which is a super load. I have to get two gaps over instead of just the one and a half. So, uh, one of the things I remember from football, one of the few things I remember was always that keep your head up. You'll break your neck if you don't keep your head up. Uh. Is it scary that you have to like start that, you know, your presence on the start, field? I have to start. I'll do it on my bed because you can't see if I do it on the ground. But Oh, we get some e-girl shit. Get it. Ooh. I start like this. Like I'm looking at my punter through my legs mm -hmm. and I have to snap the ball. And like as my hands are coming through, my head has to come up because I have to get up to block one way or the other. Yep. So that moment of like that moment of blindness because you have to look at where you're snapping is that is that a, a scary that's, moment that's the hardest part of long snapping is like there's plenty of kids in college who can snap a really really great ball but snapping a really 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 great ball doesn't mean shit if you can't get your head back up to block so what stops the person in front of you is it it's a isn't there like someone in the center on the uh defense uh, is like there not? Tackle. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So is it like what stops the nose tackle from just the moment you go down, grabbing your head and pushing you down, or not your head, but your well, your? I, I start down. Uh -huh. So like I start like this, and then I throw it back really fast. So it's just an immense so, like, like as you snap, your like, head's up. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm up and moving back at almost at the same time. Okay, so you're when you start. Sorry, this is this is football ignorant uh, questions. So when you start, your head is down, and you're already looking at your QB before you snap it to him or your kicker yeah. or whoever it is. Um, you're you're looking there. Do you do you long snap for the uh, the punts too, or not the punts? I'm sorry, the uh, the kickoffs. No, yeah, no kickoffs. No, there's no snap. I'm sorry, not kickoffs. Uh, the field goals. Uh, field, field goals. Yeah, yeah. Field goals and punts are the only two I'm on. The roommate who's very knowledgeable in football was shouting corrections at me. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, okay, yeah, that would be terrifying for me. Like the idea of these uh, very, very large first, people. My very first game uh, when I was with the Packers, my first like regular season, like real game. Um, the guy that was rushing my gap was a uh, <clears throat> six seven, two hundred ninety pounds. It's a monster. <laughs> I remember getting out there and like we like I had been in the meetings like game planning and shit. I knew how big he was, and then I got out on the field and I like look up and like <laughs> my head. I, obviously, I'm not revealing anything on my face, but I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I like turn to my left guard. I'm like, you better fucking help me right now! <laughs> like, holy shit! Oh shit! It was, it's uh, like the mountain is like six seven or something like that, right? Six nine, I think. Six nine. Do you know that the did you see uh Jojo Rabbit? Jojo Rabbit? Yeah. 
it's a uh, it's a movie about the Nazis. So I obviously you haven't seen it because you don't know the name. Oh, it's no, a, a really good movie. Highly recommend it. It's very entertaining. It's very wholesome in in some ways. It's very um, insightful too. Really good. I've so seen, I, I've seen the stills from some of this movie. Yeah. So I highly recommend it. But there's a there's a comedian in there. Um, he's also the guy who voiced Wheatley from Portal. Did you ever play Portal? All right, so let me. I'm not, uh, real, I'm not a real gamer. Sorry. No, it's all good. But hey, if you like puzzle games, like it's actually a really fun game. Like the mechanics, the fix, physics are all really cool. Um, let's see. I, I don't. Uh, I'm looking for the character who pl- guy who played Wheatley, actor. Um, Stephen Merchant. So this motherfucker, right? He's just a comedian. He's an actor and all that. But this son of a bitch is six foot seven, right? So in in oh. Jojo Rabbit, he plays a Gestapo officer. And he's just fucking terrifying. It's super creepy. He's tall. He does the German accent. It's very, uh, very crazy. But um, yeah, man, like being on the front lines as far as like football goes sounds like a, a really harrowing feeling, especially with the fact that you're playing against. I mean, you, you're not short by any means, right? You're six foot four, but like you're playing against these giants uh, on the line that's the thing is like i'm playing against these giants but like not only are they giants but like because they're in the nfl they're also the most athletic giants in the world so it's like it's not even like i just have like any old six seven guy running at me it's like i have a six seven guy who can run really fucking fast running at me (laughs) yeah very powerful giants yeah yeah it's do you remember that show made from mtv yes i fucking (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Dude, Rita, I swear to God, this past week I've had so many like buried memories pulled out of me, and it's actually amazing. I haven't thought about Made in so fucking long. That was such a great show. I watched that with my dad a lot. There are a few um, there are a few episodes that stick out in my mind. One of them is this girl who made a prom dress out of duct tape. Apparently, that was significant, and she was trying to run for prom queen. Um, the oh, that's o- right. The other one that sticks out is this guy who was trying to be like a tackle for football and i re- just remember like the diet that he ate which was like steak burritos three times a day and shit uh, on top of like 12 other meals like just an oh, absurd wait, amount of food yeah yeah he was trying oh, to put shit. on weight yeah so he was, he was... i've been trying to, I've been trying to lose weight <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, but it's just like i remember that and i remember this guy was already a monster like he looked like he was super fucking tall he didn't look unhealthy but yet he was eating this god fucking awful amount of food they ever um you ever see the movie stars like what they have to go through for like bulking yeah, up like I, thor uh, that was actually one thing i was wondering if we were going to get into um <clears throat> was actually like developed like some like a it's weird to, it's weird for men to say that they've like had eating disorders at one point in their life you know, it's like it's just not common at all but no, I almost, yeah I, I almost had like a reverse eating order when normally when you think of eating disorders it's like um people trying to lose weight uh-huh right and they can't so they like starve themselves or become bulimic and shit i basically had the opposite when i first got to college i was 185 pounds for reference i'm like 245 250 right now mm-hmm. so like so you're like, yeah like seven years ago i was 185 pounds um and i got there in my first year there wasn't really a whole lot of time to like work with me to gain weight so like they just let me play at like 185 190 not a big deal then my second year they tried to get me to gain weight and i got up to like 205 which like at the time was like fine and then the, after that my sophomore season they were like you have to be at like 225 if you want us to play you next year like blah blah blah, blah. So basically what happened was like, I'm sorry, I want to pause that real quick. Was this because of performance issues or was this concern from their experience? It was like safety slash like long snappers should be X. Okay. Which is, which is true. Like I should have, like I was way too, I looked like a wide receiver. I looked skinnier than a college wide receiver playing long snapper who they're normally like my size now, like 245, 250, okay. 35. Got it. Go um, ahead. So the co- like the strength coach was like making me wake up at like i had to be in his office at 6 a.m eating two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and drinking two chocolate milks like in front of him at 6 a.m to make sure i was like <clears throat> eating that many calories even if i even if my first class wasn't till 9 a.m 
I had to be in his office at 6 a.m. That's my kind of breakfast, but continue. (laughs) So, yeah, right? And, like, everybody I told this to was like, oh, you're trying to gain weight? Oh, I'm trying to lose it. I'll help you find it. Ha, 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 ha. And, like, that shit did not fucking help. (laughs) Oh, my God, that would piss me off. Um, Everyone was like, you're trying to gain weight. Why are you having such a hard time? People talking about it always, constantly. Like, my girlfriend at the time was like, she was trying to lose weight, and all I talked about was, like, gaining weight. And she's like, this is really upsetting me. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it was just, like, everything from all angles was like, why can't you gain weight? Why can't you gain weight? And I was literally trying to. Like, I wanted to. Like, I wanted to get bigger. I wanted to get stronger. And, like, the only way to do that is gain weight. Like, with how much I was lifting. Like, if I would have gained 25 pounds, like, all my lifts would have gone way up at that time. So, oh, like, fuck yeah. I was doing that in the mornings with my coach and then I would go to class, go to tutoring and I would be super hungry at lunchtime and like really hungry, genuinely hungry. And I would sit down and I would fill up a plate that like in my head, like I wasn't being crazy. Like I could eat and I would eat two bites and then my stomach would flip and I felt sick and I felt like I was going to puke and I just couldn't eat anymore. So I just couldn't eat anymore. Um, I ate what I could. And <clears throat> basically what started happening was I started at like 200, 205. I would get up to like 210. You know, it would take me like two weeks. And then when it came to eating, and it wasn't like a thing that I saw it on the scale. And I was like, oh, I'm 210. Like, I'm so fat. And I would stop. No, it was literally like I would get up there and my body would like somehow know and then it would do that process again of like every time I would go to eat, like I felt made sick you spot. sick, yeah, yeah. And I would go back down to two hundred pounds, and then I would get fucking screamed at by my college coaches. Um, and this happened for like two months, and it was so fucking stressful, and just ate at me all the time. Like I would go on dates with my ex before my last ex, and I would eat like two bites of like a roll of sushi like i would order one roll of sushi and like now i can smash like three rolls of sushi but like Mm -hmm. then i was ordering like one praying to be able to finish it all and again it it wasn't anything about like being vain about my appearance anything it was just this weird thing is like i would eat like two bites of something and all of a sudden my stomach would flip and i'd feel so fucking nauseous i would go to the bathroom try to like Literally, like, I would be in the middle of a date, I would eat, like, two pieces of sushi, get so full feeling that I would, like, go to the bathroom, try to poop to, like, relieve some part of my stomach to, that would allow me to eat more. Jesus, and dude. And it was, like, it was, like, really, like, interfering with, and I, and I had buddies tell me, oh, like, lean back in your chair and, like, stretch your stomach out, and, like, that, that, it's called the Dutchman stretch, it'll, like, stretch your stomach out and you'll be able to eat more food. And I'm, like, fucking trying that shit, I'm, like, in the middle of a date and, like, my date has smashed two rolls of sushi and she's like a really great, beautiful looking girl. And I'm over here and I ate like four pieces while we've been sitting there with our food in front of us for 45 minutes. So and it was like really embarrassing. Do you ever try like high calorie, like those thousand calorie shakes? Yeah. But like I could drink that and then I wouldn't be hungry for like six hours and then it was time to go to sleep. So I would drink a thousand calorie shake and then maybe ingest another thousand or five hundred. So what I was co- the, I couldn't eat any fucking more. What was the so, resolution? The resolution was um, I finally went into the training room. I was like, listen, I, I can't fucking gain weight. I don't know what's going on. They were like, okay, we can get like stomach cultures and like blood work done and blah blah blah, blah all this shit. And they were like, before we do that, let's have you talk to the team psychologist because like we have like a couple checklist things that we usually do before we get lab work done. So like not a big deal and so i go and talk to this guy and he uh dr lionel rosen he's like one of the most amazing people i've ever met in my entire life old guy literally looks like fucking gandalf like huge long beard he's been a sports psychologist since like before sports psychology was even like a recognized thing um and basically he told me it was like all this all this pressure isn't helping um, but we can do something to like help in the meantime. Um, and he, he was like, we have three options and one of which I would never prescribe for you. 
And then, he, and so he explained it. He was like, the first option that you will absolutely not do is basically this antipsychotic medication that will literally put 40 pounds on you, like, in a month. Fucking and hell. Like, he was like, I could never in good faith give that to you. So like, Good on him. Never. Holy yeah. shit. So, and then he was like, or he was like, because it sounds like an anxiety thing, I could basically give you, like, a week uh dose of xanax and you could take that like an hour before every meal to chill you out before you eat and i'm like oh don't really want to fucking do that because i was in college and i had heard about people like taking xanis and shit uh -huh. like that. i just didn't want to do that even though i had like a legit reason to mm -hmm. uh, and then he was like or i can prescribe you this um really light antidepressant which uh you'll probably gain 10 15 maybe 20 pounds He's like, it's so much of an, it's like so light of an antidepressant that like you won't feel different, uh huh. but you should be able to eat more. Like, I think this is the way to start before we get into the Xannies and like shit like that. I'm like, okay. All right. Two months later, I was 225. Like, how did that make you it, feel? It, like getting 225, dude, being 225 and like, I, so that was in February and then by like April, may i was 225 almost 230 and like i remember the the day that i felt the best about it was i was at conditioning in the summer and one of my coaches came up to me and he kind of got really close to me he was like he's like dude you look really big I'm like yeah. i was like yeah i've been like i've gained 25 pounds like since february and he's like he's like are you on the shit and i'm like no he was like he was like He's like you can you can tell me like are you, you on are you doing like, gear you are you on juice no seriously he like asked me straight up and i was like i was like no coach i'm not like i swear to god i was like i talked to uh dr rosen and he got me on this medicine and i can i can eat more now um and it's funny i know you're such a like, joe big joe rogan guy but it was like three years ago ari shafir was on there and he was talking about one of the antidepressants that he was on um, uh, mirtazapine or remron and one of the side effects is that i didn't know this was the side effect that allowed me to gain weight but ari gained like 30 40 pounds of like really bad weight because of the side effect apparently the side effect isn't like increased appetite it's inability to feel full oh that's what the actual side effect apparently is. And so is that it, what you? What it, it's it's not increased appetite, which like a lot of antidepressants are increased appetite. Right. But the one that I'm on, I'm on like the weakest milligram. I'm on the weakest dose. The side effect is inability to feel full. And Man. it worked in me. And I'm like right at the sweet spot of where my weight needs to be. You know, it's this funny. Summer, I got like quite a bit of, not quite a bit above it, but I was above where I wanted to be. And so actually I haven't taken it in like a week and I've been losing weight because I haven't really been that hungry, but actually I noticed this a couple times in college whenever I would slack on like picking up my prescription on time. I, it's weird cause I have never really suffered from like anxiety whatsoever, but mm -hmm. I knew how it was like manifesting while I was in college. Cause I felt super needy in my relationship. So I was like, fuck, I need to go pick up my prescription. Now I don't feel like needy in my relationship. Um, mm -hmm. So I probably felt needy because my ex was a fucking bitch, but now I'm like very fulfilled. So I don't really feel <laughs> needy in that way. Um, but now, like today, I was laying in bed earlier, and because I haven't taken it in a week, I got this like weird anxiety thing in my chest. So I'm thinking about starting it up again. But do you get? Uh, do you talk to a? Do you talk to someone regularly just to like spot check and make sure that you're okay because you've been taking that for so long and all that? Uh, for the for the medication no but like for sports psychology type shit yeah we have a guy through the dolphins who's fucking awesome awesome good, good. yeah he's really really good yeah so i uh that that's a very interesting you know if i wonder if like pot had been legal like nationally when you were going through that <laughs> if they would have said just like you know hey hit a joint or something <laughs> like that because <laughs> i mean it's still it's still ncaa illegal that's an insatiable type of hunger holy crap but yeah, that's that's crazy. That's a that's an adventure to go through just to yeah, to gain was, some weight. That was one of the most like trying times of my fucking life. So did the, the did the psychologist believe that you were having that block when it came down you're sitting in front of a meal, it's time to eat and you start feeling sick. Um did 
did he believe that that was anxiety triggering that? He had like hunches. He wouldn't tell me straight up like what he thought it was. Um, because and honestly, like as good as he was, I don't know if he actually knew. Um, but I I remember one story which is like kind of funny that he told me. Um, at the time, like when I was going through this and, and explaining to him like the coaches want me to eat more, I have to gain this weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes. I was a psychologist in the armed forces i think he was a marine i can't remember what the fuck he was yet he was like i would work in our like prisoner camps that we had and um one thing that i learned from another camp when we had like uh i said vietnam right when we had a captured like general or someone of great influence in uh the resistance basically um we would treat them super super well uh, we would get them like their own little hut closed off from everybody else in the kind of like prison camp. Um, and what we would do is we would have them there for a couple weeks and then we would have some of our guys who took care of them tell these important people like, hey, you know, on this date, we're going to get a couple girls for you, dude. And you know what? We're just going to you can have all the fun you want. And they're like, Oh, shit. OK, cool. Then like the next day, they're like, hey, like. It's so and so this many days away. Like, be ready. Like, like we're doing this for you. Like, you know, be ready. And they were, they were literally, they were building up this experience. Like, hey, we're some like girls. Pavlovian, like, we're spending, yeah, we're spending money on you. Like, you better, you know, take care of them because they're gonna be taking care of you. And they would do it in a way that, like, in their head, they would get so ooh, built up. Like, this is really, really important that the u.s armed forces actually outfitted the huts with cameras and they built it up so much that the the general the generals or whoever the people of influence were couldn't get it up with these girls in there and so they would use that film to blackmail these guys to tell the rest of the prisoners <laughs> no seriously to tell the rest yeah. of the prisoners to behave while they were in these prison camps because if you don't tell them to behave and they don't behave we're going to show them that fucking video of you you can't get your dick up and that was the story he fucking he goes he goes it's that's basically what's happening to you but you can't eat food so <laughs> and i was like, hey. and he was doing it to like lighten the mood and like get me to open up and he's like listen we're not dealing with that you know you just can't eat that much and he like made me feel way better about I it i love he this was like this is basically what's going on i love it i uh <laughs> It's funny because I've been over there and the shit I've seen as far as like, you know, stuff will do to, you know, working with or against certain people is kind of funny in some some situations. So hearing this, there's no part of me that that fucking disbelieves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's fucking nuts. Though. Like the idea that it was that difficult to put down food like I wish like I, so I've been. Uh, I don't know, and that—that's the fucking thing. Is like my whole life. It was like, <laughs> oh, you're trying to gain weight, you know. Blah 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 blah. I'll help you find mine. Like like. I've I've been ordering um my meals because of what's going on. Right, getting to the grocery store was hard. I'm a single man with disposable income, so I pay for a meal service. Right, um, but I've been getting my meals, and I get them low enough calorie content that I can continue to consume alcohol guilt-free um and and my weight's been you know slowly going down as i control it that way right but otherwise if i wasn't doing this dude i go out and i buy like two inch steaks and like ribeyes and i'll eat an entire you know 24 ounces of of real basically raw uh uh red meat on top of vegetables and all bacon covered brussels sprouts and shit like that whatever i want to cook um and it's really hard to maintain so yeah. just to hear was, this when i got into the nfl and started making like nfl money like before when i was training and shit and like on a very strict budget like i made i didn't make any money my parents would give me like 50 bucks a week to like buy groceries for myself basically um so i was like very stringent like i ate all the food i made for myself yada 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 and like i was pretty lean and shit but like when i started making nfl money like my tastes my taste went up too so it's like when i if i did go out with my ex like i would get an entree couldn't really afford a salad if i wanted to buy her an entree so like i wouldn't even order a salad so i just like just eat my entree now it's like oh appetizer salad entree 
mer, mer, mer. Yep, and yep. like now like last summer i like kind of got fat i was i was like i was a heavy but i wasn't yeah like, body weight fat i was heavier than i should have been when i was like body weight fat but or body fat uh, heavy but i don't know yeah I, it's that sucks the most is like because i mean I could order Postmates every night, or I could eat the fucking chicken I made three days ago and then cook some new rice for myself. Like, what sounds better? Right, yeah. This lobster, or this shrimp Philly cheesesteak, or three-day-old refrigerated chicken <laughs> with rice? It's it's such... I am, It is so expensive to order from DoorDash, but holy shit, is DoorDash one of the greatest things in the fucking world? Like, honestly, I think at, the, at this point... If you get Dash Pass, pass it like takes away the delivery fee and all that, or some of the fees and all that, so it, it makes it way less expensive. I should have fucking bought that at the beginning of this thing, but I still can't bring myself <laughs> to actually purchase it. I think, like, uh, since I've done the meal service, I haven't used it as much, but before this, when I was traveling for work during the week and then Friday through Sunday I was home, I was door dashing every night, twice a day sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, it was kind of madness, but I I think the dash patch would a patch, a little Sean Connery coming through. I uh, I've been. Are you a James Bond fan? No. What have you watched the movies? No. Oh man, go back, Golden Eye. Start Golden Eye and just work your way through Pierce Brosnan and then uh, Daniel Craig. Uh, amazing movies i've been on a huge james bond kick lately like i i started i did golden eye i don't and i think i did the world is not enough and then uh now i'm on uh what do you call it uh i just did all the daniel craig ones the new one was supposed to come out april 3rd didn't come out because of coronavirus oh, shit yes they're gonna release it on normal shit no they pushed it back to november 25th that's that sucks Oh, it does. I am so fucking the best James Bond is Sean fucking Connery. But regardless, sorry, I I try to not read chat throughout this whole thing. But uh, James Bond question came through. Um, yeah, no, James Bond movies. I mean, there's just like a, a cliche machismo machismo uh, throughout them. And it's just a very enjoyable, repetitive kind of movie series. I enjoy it a lot. You like the objectification of women? No, of course that's not. Literally all I heard. <laughs> that is literally all I heard, you piece of shit. I know. I'm, liking James Bond in 2020 is a taboo. Our taboos do change kind of, you know, differently, right? Like certain comments and jokes are taboo now. Where was, well, what was taboo 10 years ago, right? I can't even think of ago. it now. I don't know about 10 years ago, but I know that like back in the day, like, was it the Flintstones were the first on tv couple to sleep in the same bed is that true yeah i think it was the brady bunch or yeah it might have been but like yeah a show as wholesome as the brady bunch to be the groundbreaking thing to like put a husband and wife in a bed together it's like fucking weird like like when i think about conservatives now how they want you know america's christian country it's like I kind of understand like where they're coming from in terms of like how they grew up with like that being taboo. Like, holy shit. It, it's a crate. Like I, I often fantasize about bringing like historical figures from like 300 to plus years ago, like to, to now to seeing a TV screen, to seeing a computer monitor, playing a video game, whatever. Like those are fun things to think about, but like, just think about the person 60 years ago that you're talking about. Right. Like someone from the 1960s who comes to the to the year 2020 and and sees what we have on TV on a regular basis. Yeah, no, like, uh, what's his name? Captain Kirk kissing uh, Uhura, like the first interracial kiss on national oh, television. Forgot about that actually. Yeah, like they're they're just crazy things. Like a husband and wife not sleeping in the same bed, kissing black people, whatever. Like these things were so different, and yet you know. We're still continuing to experience super change. It's kind of weird because, like, it like I don't even really think about it. I like joke about it with her, but like Haley's mixed. Like mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago, that really wouldn't go over well. No, no, it wouldn't. Like, I mean, there's still members of my family. I remember saying, like, you know, I don't think white and black people should, uh, you know, be together because I think the races are 
uh, significant in themselves and that no one should mix. And I'm like, well, fuck, man, was that person saying that because they were they were just against white people dating black people? Or were they saying that because they genuinely see some sort of uniqueness in, in one race being the way they are and another race being the way they are? I don't know. Strange times, man. This is America. This, <sighs> anytime someone says this is America, I think of the, uh, the, the Childish Gambino video. That's what I was referencing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, crazy times, right? Always something crazy happening. The corona stuff is is batshit. The last four years of having Donald Trump as our president has been batshit. I still can't believe it's like... <laughs> it, no, it it is. If you take a moment, you sit back and you're like, how do we end up here? It's really fucking weird. And if you think about it, like, I, a lot of Republicans were not on board with Trump. They wanted Chris Christie. They wanted Marco Rubio. They wanted, um, what's his name, Ted Cruz, right? They wanted those Republicans. And then Donald Trump just kept going through and through. And you heard the establishment. You heard Fox News that now fawns over him at, uh, before, like, being super critical or treating him as a joke. Check. I really, I honestly believe it's, like, maybe one or two, one or two segments less that a news source did on him probably would have made all the difference. Yep. If people would just left him alone, treated him, treated him as a joke instead of a ratings booster. I think that, um, yeah, it, no, it's, it's very unfortunate. I think the media had a huge impact on that. I don't mean to be like the, the media guy after the first, his fucking apprentice after the first season was shit. (laughs) God, I season was great. I mean, it was great TV, but, I didn't follow The Apprentice. The, Pre- the Apprentice wasn't mine. I really enjoyed American Idol when it was first on. I was in like sixth grade, I think, yeah. when that came out. I liked yeah. American Idol. Uh, I, have I, a, I have a picture of Carrie Underwood uh, and I. Together. Yeah? She kissed, she kissed me on the cheek. Oh, fifth shit. Fifth grade. Yeah? I uh, I once gave Eliza Schlesinger my shirt. Um, I was in Afghanistan, and she came to... Uh, she really loves Eliza. Does Eliza. she? Yeah, yeah. so... She came to Afghanistan and um and did like a USO tour and all that with a bunch of other celebs. And uh, I I used to do stand up comedy. So this is actually not when I was military, but I was a government contractor and I was doing stand up comedy in Baltimore. And um, she came uh, came there and I'm like, hey, would you watch my comedy and and tell me what you think? And she's like, I hate doing that. It's really <laughs> awkward for me. And I'm like, pretty please, because. I'm socially awkward and just can't read cues. And I'm like, will you pretty please? And she said, you know what? You give me your shirt and I will do it. So I, I took <laughs> I took my shirt off. I gave it to her. I DM'd her on uh, on Facebook. And we had like a, a pretty long back and forth, like super detailed notes about my comedy and all that. Damn. It was one of the cooler experiences I had overseas. That's pretty sick, actually. I'm a firm believer of uh, women aren't funny. No, I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking kidding. I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> Do you watch South Park? Yeah, of course. Did you see the season where like Cartman like went re- super SJW and was like, oh, "Women yeah. are, are are super funny oh, and smart." <laughs> and then she starts like having this like really intelligent breakthrough moment where she's like using emojis to represent mathematical equations with yeah. Elon Musk and to get to Mars or some shit. But like Cartman's focusing on her not being funny. He's having the realization that he doesn't actually find her funny. <laughs> and he's kind of like struggling with it. Oh, my God. And he starts thinking that men are going to be harvested for their cum. And that's all they're used for and that women take over. It was a really good season. <laughs> South Park's one of the greatest shows ever. I think that's the one place that I think is a safe haven for the jokes that a lot of people feel they can't say. Not for much longer, I'm afraid. I'm really afraid of that. I really don't think they're going to be able to get away with it that much. I'm waiting for the day they they quit. Like the last three or four seasons, they have committed to only 10 episodes because they want to work on other things. And so they, uh, you know, it's stressful. Like, do you know they go episode to episode for each thing? I've I've watched that. uh, I've watched that documentary so many times. I absolutely love that documentary. What's really weird is, what is his name? John Heater? No, no, that's Napoleon Dynamite, right? Chris... No. Fuck. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Thank you. Um, Bill, excuse me, was a writer during that season. I don't know how many yeah. seasons he wrote, but yeah, I mean, was. he was with them, um, which is kind of crazy. 
in itself. But then, like, you watch him, and it's like it doesn't seem like he has a super active presence, at least in that week, like the to watch. But he's a brilliant writer. If you the one where they're doing um, it was a human sentai pad. That so there's that one that yeah I rem- that's the one that they were doing. But then they also have like uh scenes of them doing the one with uh steamy nicks where they shit themselves and it's like <laughs> dubstep or whatever they're supposed to be like making fun of dubstep but it's like they're all just fart and shit themselves uh and he's talking about they call her steamy ray nicks <laughs> and like, like holy shit like that the video of them recording that is like no one can make it through and not laugh because they're just cracking up it's totally one of those moments of contagious laughter like they're laughing so hard you can't not laugh the show is brilliant and if you look at it through the proper lens it's it's clever and crude at the same time and that's i think the perfect kind of humor for me yeah yeah i i think the thing that's most impressive is they they literally started out dick and fart jokes like that's absolutely it (laughs) cartman gets an anal probe was the very first episode yeah like i somewhat appreciate that they're doing Social commentary, things Social like that. Social commentary, yeah. I appreciate. I do appreciate it because they do it in a pretty good way. But there are some times where I'm like, "Will you just make an episode about boobs fucking, <laughs> fucking someone in a dumpster?" Like I don't even know. Like just something stupid and off the wall that doesn't have to make sense. Like, did you watch the last do, season? Uh, this most recent one, I don't actually think I have. But a complete return to the original. You should go back and th- let me make your week. Go back and watch it. Integrity, Integrity Farms. Did it start out there? It started there, but it didn't okay. finish there. So they changed over. They brought, they brought back uh, Al Gore, right? Uh, I don't know if that was this season or the last, but yeah, they did bring back Al Gore. Okay. But yeah, the new, the last season was a completely different South Park than what we've experienced the last couple of years. Um, they start with Integrity Farms, but they kind of shelve it, and then they bring out new stories. And there were like some very the boys centric episodes. You know, like classic South Park, dick and fart jokes. Very funny. When they pigeoned, like, Mr. Garrison um, to be Trump, when they pigeonholed him there, it's like, it was really, really funny. It was a good-ass concept. It just, like, to extend it for an entire season, it wasn't really like them, and I didn't like it that much. It worked. They made it work, but it's like, I love the classic. I love, God, one of my favorite episodes is when... uh, all the dads start giving themselves uh, ball cancer. They're like shoving their balls in the microwave. And they bounce on them. Yeah. They bounce on them to go get the medical weed and shit. Like that, that shit is so fucking funny to me. Yes. There's plenty of that new season. I don't, what's your fiance's name? Is it Haley? Haley? Haley. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Haley's a fellow South Park fan, but no. watch this. It's so good. She actually, she actually like, family guy like really likes family guy but she doesn't like south park at all yeah a fun fact about Haley: she was a uh, miss michigan in 2013 what and competed in miss america oh miss michigan look at you go damn daniel she we've known each other for 11 years at this point she was like one of the first like five ten people i met when i moved to michigan oh so you met her in high school yeah so we've been we've been like really good friends for a while I was friend zoned so hard, dude. Holy shit. Hold on. How much time do you have? Whatever. Let's uh, let's take a real quick break because yep. I've been drinking consistently throughout this. Uh, I'm gonna put the screen to black mute us and we'll be right back and we will I wanna pick up with the story of Haley and Tabor. <laughs> the friend zoning. Yeah. We'll be right back.
up up and we're back ladies and gentlemen continuing our conversation with taper snapping aka taper pepper or would it be the other way around it doesn't matter uh we we left off last many minutes ago with the discussion about the friend zoning of miss haley or, or vice versa the friend zoning of taper by miss haley do, do tell the story I don't know. We were so like basically what happened was like we um we Haley or Haley and I uh my little sister and I, my family and I, we all moved to Michigan and we didn't know anybody. So <clears throat> my way I was actually gonna quit football that year in ninth grade if we stayed in Oklahoma. Um so I could play tennis year round. Uh which is so fucking funny to think about now that I'm in the NFL. But uh, the only reason I played football when I moved to Michigan was because men's tennis season was in the fall, whereas in Oklahoma it was in the spring. Um, so I knew that, like, oh, I'm going to a new school. I need to make, like, as many friends as possible or, like, as meet as many people as possible. So the most people on one team is usually the football team. So I went and started playing football. Um so I started doing conditioning with the team and shit like that. And then my little sister was eight or nine. She's six years younger than me. So yeah, eight or nine. And um, my mom saw in the newspaper baton twirling camp or whatever. And so my mom signed her up for that. And one of the, so Sloan did that. And then my mom went up to the coach and like noticed that there were like older girls there who were baton twirling as well. <clears throat> and my mom was like, Hey, I have a son who's going into 10th grade. Like maybe he could meet some of the girls here just so he's not like, doesn't know no one when he gets, gets to school. Right. So <sighs> my mom fucking dragged me to like lunch at baton twirling camp um, while they were all in this cafeteria. Wingman mom. And, yeah, basically, and uh, so awkward. I met all these girls, <laughs> and they were nice. They were super nice. Like they weren't like bitchy or anything. And Haley was one of them. Um, if only I'd known. What was one of them? I'm telling them our origin story. <laughs> she rolled her eyes and walked out. <laughs> anyway, my sister like stayed with the baton twirling team. Um, there were competitions and shit like on the weekend so i being the brother my family would take me along with and then the girls were the older girls were my age so i would hang out with them when i didn't want to hang out with my parents so then we all became friends so like when my little sister would go to these competitions i would hang out with the older girls Haley, connor all these different girls um and we were just best buds for a while and i had a huge crush on her holy shit huge crush and i just got friend zone which was fine because like she was that damn fine back in high school i was totally okay wait with wait friend zone when you said you were friend zone like did you make an attempt and it was no, sidelined no like i knew she was so out of my league i never made an attempt ever and i was bold i was a bullet like i wasn't a prude <laughs> in high school i definitely was not a prude but like so out of my league so um yeah I was, we, oh, when did, we went okay. through high school and we were buddies and then she went to college and then i went to college and we kind of lost touch and then we regained communication like once i was done with college and then we like kind of got together like you know, like a month before i got signed by the packers and then when i got signed by the packers i was like fuck it dude i've already like achieved one dream like why not like Try to hit Haley up. <laughs> Why <laughs> not? It kind of, kind of worked, and I mean, kind, kind of. of worked, worked <laughs> engaged, and, you know, we don't have a date for anything, but you know, it's funny. Well, that's. I mean, I like stories like that, right? Like that's that's a that's a good story. I we've just known each other forever. It's just really nice. It's like when when you get to the NFL, it's like it's kind of you'd kind of be surprised how many people reconnect from someone that they went to high school with. Like one of our good like couple friends that he plays for the Dolphins as well. Like they've been together since high school, 
they've like legit been together by, since high school. My punter and his girlfriend legit been together since high school. Like we've just been friends for, we were friends for like eight, nine, ten years before we ever got romantically involved at all. That's that's a good story though. Like that you've known each other so long that it didn't. It just helps. There's so much then. trust there. Yeah. I know, I know who she's been for a very long time. There's nothing to like, you know, yep. you fucking date somebody, you date somebody and then you go out with old high school friends of theirs and like, oh, you hear a story that's like very unbecoming of them and you like mm-hmm. have a different view. Like I literally never have to worry about that. Nope, not at all. I, I like that though. It's very, very cool. So now you're here, you're engaged, you're a Miami Dolphin. I, I'd say life's pretty go- going pretty well. Pretty damn good. Yeah. Not bad. And also the video game thing. So let's talk about that. What's your – you've been doing the esports thing. I met you through Steven. I met you through uh, I think around the time Apex Legends was getting big yeah. uh, is when you and I first started speaking. Um, That's still one of my favorite fucking games. I'm so sad that it's like dead now. Uh, it used to be so much fun. It's, the, it's hard to keep up with all the games. Like there's always something new. There's always something that drives yeah, my attention. Yeah. Like Apex died for me because of world of warcraft classic that -hmm. killed it for me so i went to wild classic i think a lot of people did um pubg like there are all these different uh what do you call them battle royales right so pubg's been around for a long time fortnite apparently it shows no signs of fucking stopping um but then you had the it shows no signs of stopping but the the pros like this guy that gave me his jersey like when i read his twitter and then like other pros twitters like they all fucking hate it like they've hated it for years (laughs) But uh, like mainstream wise, it, it's definitely not stopping. Yeah, yeah. No, I still uh, I learned about random people. I I had no idea played video games talking about Fortnite, right? Um, and then what do we have? We have Doom. Have you tried Doom? No, I'm not that good of a gamer to play Doom. Dude, I'm not either. But I love Doom. I absolutely love it. I I, I heard about it coming out. I saw. It. I remember seeing gameplay from before, and it turned out to be one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Like it's really just. But here's the it other thing. It looks beautiful. The the like nothing really looks like sloppy in terms of controls no. or or graphics or whatever. No, not at all. The last what is it? 2020. The last seven years of my life have been consumed by esports titles, right? So mm-hmm. StarCraft was the big one, League of Legends, CS:GO, whatever. Um, it's nice to play a game that doesn't have a ladder, where it's just you playing. Where you're not worried yeah. about a team, you're not worried about a competition or a rank. You're just fucking killing shit. Witcher three, when I, I, oh God, when I first bought it, like the very first week, I had already put in like, like in the first week of owning it, I put in like forty eight hours. Like I was playing a shit ton. Holy I shit! I just stopped all of a sudden. I played a little bit last week. I really should keep playing it, but the shit was fun. It was a lot of fun. What'd you think of the show? I liked it. It got me really interested. It got me so interested that I like downloaded the audiobook and was trying to listen to it, but it's pretty fucking detailed. I couldn't really catch all of it. I did find online someone posted like uh, a four part series on YouTube that like there's no guesswork in terms of trying to piece together the timeline because even the books go all over the place. So they broke it down literally piece by piece. So I'm going to listen to that eventually. If you can link me that, that would be awesome because I um, yeah. I had that problem. It, it took me a few when episodes to realize. Like, oh, fuck, we're jumping around. Like, yeah. It took way too long to realize that. I've never played The Witcher, so I had no background on any of the characters. So The show is what got me to play the game. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you just started playing the game. Yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, I started playing the game. Or I'm sorry, no, not playing the game. I bought the game. I haven't played it yet. Uh, but it was inspired to do so by the show. It's a good show. I enjoy it. But it took me a long time to realize that timelines were spliced and all that. Link acquired. I'm going to save that. I DM'd it and then I put it in chat for anybody who's in here. Got it. Perfect. Thank you, brother. Let me yeah, save that. Ah, But yeah, no, the, I think the show, though, was good. I think that the the casting of Homeboy from Superman, can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he did really well. Oh, I know his name. Uh, Superman actor. Uh, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Yep. Ah. 
Yeah. As soon as you said the age, I knew it. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people. Holy shit! I never realized how many uh, Supermen there were. Did you know yeah. Nicolas Cage played Superman in Teen Titans? Really? I didn't know that. I like the original Teen Titans. The new one sucks. If you Google Superman actor, right, and it's look at look at all the actors, though, there's a very similar look to all of them. Tell me there isn't. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like all of those. Everyone from George Reeves, Nick. Like the, uh, like, the wide very wide face yep the wide jaw uh some uh, some of them had the thinner nose Arc, like the thinner bridge Harman? channing tatum the lego movie wait what did you say mark Harmon? what what justice league crisis on two earths was he a voice actor for it channing tatum voiced superman in the lego movie Holy this is shit. crazy yeah no uh, mark Harmon did in the justice league that's nuts dude i used to watch ncis so you remember we were talking about like professional cringe <laughs> sorry i look at this and i'm like this guy does not look like a superman his name is ryan driller superman versus spider-man xxx and <laughs> axel braun parody oh my god <laughs> american pornographic actor ryan driller uh, yeah, yeah. i want to know what his real name is i refuse to believe that this man was born with the name driller and ended up drilling poon for porn But I don't see a real name. Maybe that was it. Holy shit. <laughs> you were born with your calling. But no, uh, so we were talking about like professional cringe, like you as an NFL player watching like an NFL movie, right? Mark Harmon, there was a scene in NCIS. He's he's supposed to be this Marine gunnery sergeant, uh, former scout sniper. And he and he goes and sees this platoon of Marines and he gives them this ura. But he says it real fucking weird like that. Like, well, if you were to say oorah, you're saying oorah. Like, you just say it, right? There's nothing specific. Um, but he he does this oorah. Like, he says it real fucking weird. Oorah. Yeah. Like, and it like... just, <laughs> oh, I want to slip my wrist to make me feel super weird. Uh, yeah, super cringe. Um, I'm trying to think of other shit that I've watched that's, like, super Sorry, one cringe thing I just got was like somebody actually bought my jersey and like took like a picture in it and like tweeted it at me and it's like super cool. I said, hey, thank you so much for supporting me. And then somebody responds, no disrespect to Tabor because I love that guy, but John Denny should be the jersey, which is like the long snapper before me. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, what do I say? <laughs> what though? the? Like, why? Like, why was. Did you. So. Fucking loser. God damn. That's how I feel. And he follows me. Like, God damn, it's so annoying. That's a very people, mean like, thing to say. Feel the need. It's the internet, I'll man. Just say thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it, pal. No, but like, it's it's a very mean thing to say, and it's unnecessary. And you wonder why does someone feel empowered to say that, or why? I mean, we know why they feel empowered because it's the internet, right? The guy, the guy that I replaced, like he snapped here for four, like fifteen years, like. He was the guy. Whatever, right? Yeah. Well, you don't have to fucking tweet at me about it. No, you don't. That guy didn't have any social media. So, like, I'm sorry you can't, like, jerk off and, like, tweet at him. But, like, holy shit. Like, I'm here now. Like, love, like, you hate me. You don't have to say anything. No, exactly. It's it's That's a really mean thing. It's a really weird way for the internet that, I mean, it's not weird, right? We know the internet. We know that's how they operate. It's just very unfortunate. It's, just, it's just still just shocking that people go there right because if you go meet someone in person you have a normal one-to-one -one adult interaction no one is going to say shit like that like no one's going to be like Not look a chance if that guy was sitting with you in a bar right now he wouldn't look he over and see someone there <laughs> exactly i mean look at those luscious locks right but like he wouldn't look at that person next who walks up to you and says, hey, man, I love you. Like, look, I got your jersey on. It was really nice to meet you. He wouldn't turn to you after that guy walks away and says, yeah, that's a really cool jersey he has. But he should have the other guys. But fuck that guy. And how cool is the other guy? <laughs> exactly. He wouldn't do that. And, oh, God, that's frustrating. I mean, I deal with that shit, too. It being on the Internet, it's annoying. It's upsetting when people interact with you in a way that they wouldn't in our, interact with you in person. But. Al, like, what are you going to do? It's fucking tough. Support me. Love me. 
hey, you know what? I I I would wear your jersey, Tabor. My uncle was a huge um or is a huge Dolphins fan. He was he was a fan though when like Dan Marino was the guy, right? Like those years of Dolphins. The thing I have found, the thing I have found with being a Dolphin is that everyone was a Dolphin fan when Dan Marino was around. <laughs> That's like the general consent. Like if you were around to watch football then, it's like, I don't care where you were from, <laughs> where you went. Dan Marino. Fan of now is like, you were a fan of Dan Marino and the fucking Dolphins then. It's like, the, I mean, fuck, I'll take it, but. what It's like them, the Broncos, and the Bears. And the uh, the Dolphins, the Broncos, the Bears, and the Cowboys have had their little eras of obsessive fanery around the entire NFL yeah. sphere. The eighty five Bears and shit, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um. Yeah, I re- I remember my, I had a gunnery sergeant who was a huge Bears fan, but he was from North Carolina. I'm like, why the fuck do you like the Bears? And he said, eighty five Bears or whatever year That's it was. It. Yeah. That's all it takes. Yep. I have. I don't think it's here with me, but um, my parents' friend from college does a like charity auction every year for like their foundation or whatever. And one year he gave me a signed Eric Dickerson football, who I didn't even know who it was at the time, but he apparently is like one of the best running backs of all time in the NFL, which was really cool for him. He just gave it to me, and then. The next time that I saw him, he gave me a Jim Jim McMahon jersey, which was the quarterback for the '85 Bears. He gave me a signed Jim McMahon. That's jersey. insane. And I like I didn't really appreciate it that much when I got it because I didn't really know who he was. But then like the thirty for thirty of the '85 Bears came out. And, like there's been a couple documentaries about him. Like when I watched that and like learned who Jim McMahon was, I was like, holy shit! Like that's cool that I got a signed. Do you have it framed? From him. I don't have it framed yet, but my parents have it at their house so that's really slick it's so funny it's like i don't know it's just the way times are now is like i've wanted a piece of 100 thieves gear so bad that like when i originally got this i was like oh shit like i'm gonna get this framed (laughs) but like getting jim mcmahon's jersey framed is like not on my priority list though (laughs) but like seeing this thing is like so sick to me i don't know i love it no no fuck it you want to hear a story? Let me let me tell you a story. My my, I went to an Indians game. It was my first baseball game ever, and I was a little kid. I want to say like nine years old or something, right? And my grandpa comes up to me, and like it was the Indians versus the Cubs, and I he gives me this ball autographed by Jim Tomey, the first baseman, or I think. And I'm not a baseball guy, so you. And then it's Sammy's like the opposite. Sammy Sosa, right? You got you know Sammy oh, Sosa, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. Sammy Sosa. So it's autographed by Jim Tomey and Sammy Sosa, right? And he gives me this ball, and they kept it in the TV cabinet in their house, like it stayed at their house, and it stayed in the bottom drawer of the TV cabinet. And every time I was over there, I could like go and look at it, whatnot. And then I grew up, and I realized that it, oddly, Jim Tomey and Sammy Sosa had the same signature, and what was even weirder was that Jim Tomey and Sammy Sosa's signature also matched my grandfather's signature. Ouch. Yeah. (laughs) I appreciate the gesture, but for years, I I told people that I had a Jim Tomey and Sammy Sosa signed ball. (laughs) It's like, you know, that retroactive cringe that it's like, I still ago, cringe about it. How many years oh, ago did you find that out? I think about at least 10 years ago I figured it out. Uh, <laughs> me, me 10 years ago is cringing right now. Mm. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. It's like a shower thought. Like every now and then I'll think about it. I'm like, oh, I'm so oh, stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like I, I remember that's like when I, I was in fifth grade when I finally like asked my parents, like, is Santa real? Like that's late as fuck, right? <laughs> but I finally asked him like, "Is Santa real?" And my mom was like, "No." How old are How old are you? Like fifth grade. All right, that's, uh, that's old as fuck. I bawled my eyes out. I vividly remember my mom sitting on my bed, and I'm like sitting up in my bed, and I'm like, I'm like, "You lied to me." <laughs> the Santa paradox 
is the worst thing because it's like do you it's just a flat out fucking lie that you say for so long and then one day it's like oh here's the truth like there's no like gray area you know what i mean i can no longer comment on this uh... <laughs> i can't continue that part but yeah right it is it is i was in seventh grade oh my god <laughs> Okay. The su su more. summer <laughs> summer before we can we can discuss that later. Good lord. Yeah. I remember doing a, a covert ops mission. Uh, my little sister, like, motioned me over like while we were still the whole family was downstairs, but like it was before we were supposed to go to bed. She like motioned me. She goes, "You know the digital camera that I got last year for Christmas?" I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "I'm gonna set it up like in the corner." facing the tree so we can catch Sina. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, hey, Ma, I need, like, when she goes upstairs, I need to tell my parents, hey, turn this fucking camera <laughs> off. <laughs> and so I remember the next morning we, like, did all the presents, and it's, like, noon, and my little sister, I see her, like, inching over to where she hid the camera, and it was really well hidden. Like, I was like, oh, where are you going to put it? She told me exactly where she put it, and she's like, "Come on!" And so we like run upstairs. I'm like, "Oh, like what's on it? Like, oh, I want to see it. Like, did you catch him?" And she's like fast forwarding through it, and then all of a sudden, just <laughs> camera stops. Like when I when I told my parents, like it was pretty easy to get. I think my dad like stood up, was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go grab a sandwich," and like stood up and walked away. Yep. To go to the go to the kitchen, mm -hmm. and then like loop back around and just turn Boop. the camera <laughs> i i so genius. genius I, on both parts like that oh that yeah made my sister believe longer than i did doing that one thing that year made her believe longer so my mom was adamant that i would continue to do so right so i'm going to use some restrictive language because of what i just showed you so um yes. so one year i stayed up and like the my my sister's room was here my room was here the doors opened and then it was just stairs like there was no real landing right it was just you go right down stairs um mm -hmm. i my sister and i opened our doors and we watched we watched like the setting up of all those things right under the <sighs> under the tea and we're watching and i still fucking believe the next day I we like we we watched like a good like he, he brought it but they set it up like I watched like ten minutes of that and I, and then we went to bed before we got caught and I was like nah that's still good and then like like the more that I would disbelieve my mom like, went, like one year it's she like took Stockholm syndrome it is well like so we were, we were poor right my mom went overboard with um making sure that we had a really good Christmas and like beyond her means right and so like to the point that i was like oh there's no way that we afforded all this like this is entirely like you know that being right and so one year i was like according to my my mom i was trying to find proof that it wasn't real and so i took uh i took uh bags of uh, oats i put out what eight eight reindeer plus rudolph so nine nine bags of oats and i set them out on the table and i said these are for him uh, we'll see if they're, they're gone in the morning. Well, my mom took them. She dumped most of them back in the box, but then she went and sprinkled some on the porch and then drew footprints okay, in the snow. Oh, okay. I was going to say that after you said your side of the story. I, I did that, but I put it out on the lawn and I don't know how I, d I still, to this day, I, I might ask tomorrow. I still don't know how to this day there was literally a fresh layer of snow on the ground but there were motherfucking hoof prints in the yard. No human footprints to be found in that fucking yard. This that, bitch. That, I was still, like, pretty <laughs> young. Like, that was before I was, like, starting to doubt it. But, like, I don't know how those fuckers pulled that off. Dude, like, the, the oats were, like, a little eaten. And it was it, – there were legit hoof prints, dude. Like, legit. Dude. I don't know how yes. the fuck they did that. She went out and she fucking drew him with her finger. And then she said, go like the morning I wake her up, she she would like fall asleep on the couch. Right. And uh, and so like we're, we're up and it's like, Mom, it's Christmas time. And she's like, OK, I need coffee. Let the dog out first. Don't touch anything. And I, I let the dog shit. out. I hate, 
I hated that shit as a kid, but now that I'm an adult, <laughs> it's like, let me wake up before this shit show of Christmas commences. Like, I understand. Like, I will be like, listen, we're not doing gifts before 7.30 a.m. And then, you know, you can wake us up at 7.30, but you're going to have to wait on the staircase until mom and I have some coffee and make sure everything's prim and proper and just so. Yes. Right? That... It's like, now I understand it. I understood that, like, four years ago when I was, like, 21. <laughs> but, like, when you're when you're three years old to 11 years old, it's like, my ass, my bitch ass is waking up at... 6 a.m. and we're I'm gonna try to wake you up. Young young Jared, little Jared hated that. I would wake up at like six in the morning, maybe earlier, right? Like five o'clock. It was still dark out. I'd get up and I'd go into the uh I'd go into the living room and it was just like I knew the rules. Don't touch it and don't wake anyone up. I have to yeah. wait for them to naturally wake up. There were a few <laughs> years where I would set an alarm for like three or four AM, sneak down, check out what the Santa gifts were. Because those were usually unwrapped. And just when I got older, like basing it off of the Santa gifts, I would be like, okay, this is a pretty good Christmas. <laughs> but I remember one Christmas I went down there and I was like, oh, so I'm my... going to have to, I'm going to have to fake it till I fucking make it. Cause this is terrible. <laughs> my mother and grandmother had a coalition, right? So we'd always, almost always do Christmas at my grandmother's house. And they had a coalition where everything was from Santa. Everything. Period. All of it. Like, it, there was nothing from mom, nothing from dad, nothing from Grandy, nothing from Grandpa Chuck. None of that shit. It was all from Santa. Period. So I couldn't differentiate between Santa gifts and parent gifts. It just all looked like this big Santa horde. But my mom would also write, like, Frosty, Rudolph, whatever, on gifts. And so when she did that, I, thinking that I was some super intelligent young man, I, I was like, oh, well, those must be the gifts from mom, the, the ones from Rudolph. Because Rudolph's oh, not right. real, right? Frosty's not real. Yeah, Mrs. Claus isn't sending me shit. So, yeah. <laughs> the thing that, I don't know why, but it was so convincing for so long is, like, our family gifts would be wrapped with like one wrapping paper but then like duh all of the santa gifts were wrapped with another wrapping paper completely different than the family's wrapping so duh that's from santa i was such a gullible dipshit like no shit <laughs> like of course santa wouldn't use the same wrapping paper but then you go into the it's closet not like my mom would buy another different set of wrapping paper to use but then you go into you the closet and you that. find the Santa wrapping paper and you're like, why the fuck is this here? <laughs> and mom, I think I think I actually remember my mom saying something like Santa shops at Walmart as well. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, fuck. Dude, Christmas memes. Special hours. What's your favorite Christmas cookie? I mean, Christmas cookie or cookie? Because like you can make whatever cookies for Christmas. I mean, so for me, Christmas cookies are your frosted sugar cook sugar cookies, like right, so, you yeah. know, shaped them like a tree. Uh, the peanut butter blossoms, the Hershey Kiss cookies. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a Christmas like cookie. Those. The snowballs. So those are the like no. you shred almonds into like little powder and then you Absolutely ball them up. Not. Nope. 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 Um, what I'm else? A million years why I ever eat one of those. <laughs> Fruit cake, I kind of consider like a Christmas cookie. Fuck no, I will never eat that either. Nope. No, oh dude, fruit cake is good. Like a real fruit cake. Oh yeah, nope. I'll do that. Um, but my my favorite are the peanut butter blossoms, the Hershey Kiss cookies. I can peanut eat them until I die. Good. Um, if I make, if I make the frosted sugar cookies, they're dank as fuck. But if I leave it to somebody else, they don't put in the frosting. The sprinkles are all over the place, mismatched. <laughs> A fucking disaster. Just, I'll make them. But recently, my cookie um, that I've been making literally exclusively is the uh, Bon Appetit um, toffee cookie. And this will be my signature cookie until the fucking day I die. This cookie is the best cookie I've ever fucking had. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I meant to DM you. DM no, no, no. DM. I can't look at DMs while we're while we're in this shit. So yeah, go ahead and true. link it in chat. I did in chat as well. Um, dude, that shit is 
That shit bangs. Yeah? So, so hard. God, man. Cookies. I was in, a, when I was in Iraq one time, I was doing a, like a, what we call the corporal's course. And it's like a leadership course. And um, my aunt had sent me a fuck ton of cookies, like all those little tins of cookies, right? And uh, she sent me all those. I didn't, like, I was so busy going to this course, doing physical fitness stuff, and then w education and whatever. I didn't go to the chow hall, so I just ate fucking cookies. Believe it or not, if you work out, you can eat 2,000 oh, calories worth of yeah, cookies no, and still sure. be okay. <laughs> I mean, that's what they said Michael Phelps would do. He would just eat fucking Big Macs and Papa John's pizzas all day because he was burning 12,000 calories. Exactly. Yeah, I was like, ugh, like, yeah, no. Macros, what... macros really only matter if you're within a window of like 500 calories either way, like burning that much. Like, yep. When you're ingesting just a fuck ton, like as long as you hit a certain threshold of. Oh, yeah. Your macros, you don't need anything else. I have a question for you. It's something I've been thinking about this entire conversation. Is that a 0. 0.7 pen? It's a Pilot G207. But yes. These, yes. But these aren't these aren't my favorite pens. I actually I actually bought some recently. Bring it. That's actually my the G2.7 pen is my pen of choice. I'm curious to see what your pen of choice is. I know, super interesting, right, guys? The uh, the pen talk. I, I, I thought I had one around here, but, yeah, no, the G2.7 is really good. I think the other one's like a .10. That's a super thin one. Not my kind of thing. That's too chicken scratchy and just kind of the flourishes you get off of it are not something I'm into. What do you want, Taco? What? Oh, here it comes. Let's see this pen. Ooh. There we go. There we go. So while we wait for Tabor, um, we we drink in four roses tonight. Um, well, we get in the hiccups just a bit. We were waiting for uh, Tabor to get his favorite pen. Uh, in the meantime, thank you all for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Uh, this stream is not sponsored by anyone, actually. Uh, it looked like I was about to give an ad for this bourbon, doesn't it? No, but Four Roses is good. Um, also a huge fan of um, Old Forester. Old Forester Statesman, which was made uh, for the movie uh, The Kingsman. Uh this the last one what was it called the golden circle or something like that the statesmen were like the american cousins of the british uh, kingsmen really funny movie really good movie just kind of like in the same sense of james bond just like an you know rock and roll fucking action thriller kind of deal uh really nice sorry also i, I had to pee as well no um, no you're good <laughs> but i got them i did find them um Precise V5 Premium Rolling Ball. Oh. Oh, you like those ones. I don't have the These, dexterity um, for those. My, I'm pretty sure my dad like loves these, but I like... Yeah, this is 0.5 millimeter extra fine black ink. I like it because it like... It like scratches the paper. Uh, it like really attacks the paper and you get a lot of feedback from the actual sheet of paper whenever you write. That's what most of my notes in my uh, notebook from this season were in. I'm... Is that the Secret Lab Titan chair? How is it? Um, I'm not gonna, I, I, the reason I got this was because it's a fucking gamer chair. And I do like it. It's like somewhat comfortable. You can lean all the way back, all that shit, whatever. But... If I had a second chance, I would put my ego aside and, like, not get a gaming racer chair. Get a fucking ergonomic office chair. The money you're going to spend on this, spending that on a really nice ergonomic office chair will get you something that will, like, save your back. Like, 
I have to constantly adjust, like, to be really strict, to put my shoulders back when I'm playing games, to tuck my hips underneath me. Um, I wish I would have... These aren't all they're cracked up to be. They just look good. Honestly, that's it. Yeah, I'll second that. I, I bought a D... Well, I, I was actually sponsored once upon a time by D, uh, DX Racer, and... Um, and it was really nice. Like, don't get me wrong. It's a comfy chair. I literally slept in it during my 24-hour stream. You could sleep. Like, yep. It leans all the way. Like, and it'll I hold you. It's, it's, I would say it's more comfortable than a, um, a car chair. I will say as a, a person that's almost uh, a foot shorter than Tabor, it, um, it's, a, uh, it's a very comfy chair that can swallow you up. I like it. Um, but he's absolutely right. Like nowadays, I go for the office chair. I don't do the gaming chair bullshit. They're cool. They're nice. You can get these really cool. Like, what? It, which one do you have? What's the brand? The uh, is uh, it the Secret Lab? The Secret Lab. My my buddy has the Titan. Uh, you can get those with like the the Game of Thrones characters on it. Like you can get the the Targaryens. You can get the yeah. um the Lannister one is the coolest looking in my opinion. I think they're very cool. And if that's all you care about, fucking get them. But if you're looking yeah, to really yeah, yeah. sit for 12 hours, um, ergonomic, office yes, chair, please God, mm -hmm. I sit in this thing so much that like it looks good for your battle stations picture for your subreddit. But think of your ass, man. That, yeah, un uh, think of your butt, think of your hips, and think of your lower back because you're gonna fuck it up if you buy one of these. I was trying to get a sponsorship by him. I never ended up getting him, so fuck off. But Herman Miller, I guess, makes good ones. Herman Miller is one I've I've heard really good That's things. That's the of. meme one, right? Yeah, um, I I don't know if it's a meme as much as like I I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Yeah. Well, the me they have a meme chair that's like five grand. Oh yeah. No, uh, there's. That's yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Do you ever watch Frasier? I did watch Frasier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a chair in there that like costs like five thousand dollars. They mentioned like the first episode, and oh, so that yeah. that's my like, oh, I've reached VP status in my company. Cool, we're gonna we're gonna get one of those. <laughs> but yeah, so the the chair is super important. So spend the money, get a nice chair. The 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 races look cool. If you're spending three to five hours in the in the chair every other day or only on the weekends, fuck it. Get the chair that looks cool, right? But if you're going to be sitting here and doing some serious work or you work at home, the ergonomics are going to pay dividends. Also, I highly recommend doing yoga. This is completely away from the chair, but if you want to talk about mobility and like your, your back, your lumbar support, things like that, uh, yoga is a great way to uh, make a an account for the lack of mobility in our day-to-day -day work right you're doing a lot of like sitting still uh sedentary work uh not really getting out there walking around not like just think of this for instance right like how often do you do this with your neck like how often are you snapping your neck like left and right but the moment that that something makes you want to snap your neck you might pull a fucking muscle because you're not using it like as a kid you're constantly your head is always moving around. You're always doing crazy shit. You're always just you're fucking loosey goosey. Yep. Like you're somersaulting through the grass and shit. Like you're working your body. But as you get older, you stop doing that. You stop you're looking at this screen and you're looking at this screen and you tilt like this. You don't even turn your head anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like you drive. This is it, right? You're driving and you're looking, right? the end so it's out, important i figured out why my left shoulder is like super tight is because my it's the one that uses wasd yeah and it's yeah. it my movement guy is like how do you sit when you're in your chair i'm like oh well my wsd is here and like my right shoulder because i turn my sensitivity down in fps is like you move your right shoulder all around your desk because I have like the big desk wide mouse pad, so I use my whole shoulder to move my mouse. But my WASD is, I don't, I have to consciously pull it back like this. Normally it's just here. And this shoulder is mobile and this shoulder is moving because it's moving my, the mouse, yeah. My, my sights when I play FPSs. And this yep. 
this one is forward and hinged like this. So I have to remind myself to sit back, tuck this back, and then I can move this how I want. But if it's forward here like this, it's going to get stuck like that. And it's actually like impacted me before. Yeah, that shit's crazy. And it's something you got to be conscious of. And the other thing with yoga I'll add is uh, I, the year before, so 2016, when I was out of college, but I wasn't in the NFL yet, I was like in a super, super dark place, like depressed and shit like that. And I started doing yoga and it taught me... Uh, mindfulness and mindfulness literally got me out of like a fucking depression that i was in and it was like deep and it was dark and i was staying up until like three and four a.m and i wasn't waking up until like two or three in the afternoon and it was just this like sickening cycle of living in my parents basement um so were you out of college like as in done with college yeah i was yeah i was done with college living in my parents house so okay uh i'd like to talk about that because like how does that work you're you're out of college but you're still wanting to get to the nfl like to me in my mind right like i think of just the college is the only place they're drafting from so how does that how did that work like you can be a free agent like with the top guys that like get drafted like those are the top guys but there's a ton of guys who float around couple years after they're done with college who never get a chance and then there's some guys who do end up getting a chance so with long snapping it's like each team only carries one long snapper so it's only there's not as much competition as if i was like a wide receiver but there's less opportunity because there's less competition right does that make sense Mm -hmm. so if I just stuck around, like I would eventually get an opportunity. So I was just training and waiting and it was during the season and no one was signing me and it was just fucking miserable. So I finally started doing um, yoga and I was doing, I loved it so much that I started doing it like four to five days a week. And I, I got like so good to the point where like my eye, like I didn't need my eyes open in a class anymore. I would go in and like it would be each class was different but it was like I would go in and the teacher would say the instructor would say okay we're going in this pose this pose okay cool and like when you do a group yoga class it's like they take you through the flow twice and then you do it three times on your own and then you go into the ab section and then you go into a flow two times and then you do it on your own three times and like I could make it through an hour long class without opening my eyes one time and like that they say yoga is like a um fuck what they call um movement meditation active meditation i can't even remember active Um, meditation sounds right yeah and that's what it eventually became for me because whenever you finally learn enough to where you don't have to keep your eyes open and look at people all around you you're doing an active meditation the whole time and like you're listening to the cues but once you're fine with that, your body just kind of takes over and you're switching from warrior two to warrior three to triangle pose to dragonfly with like an open archer pose, boom, boom, boom. And you're just going straight up for an hour, just killing it. And that shit was a dust. Dude, I... um. My, okay, sorry. I see in the chat. <laughs> go ahead. Not go Mike ahead. 11. What's mindfulness? Mindfulness is like as simple as like, um, like this is an extreme example, but it's like, I got cheated on. I'm really upset about this. And you know what? It's okay to feel upset about this. And the other thing about feeling upset about this is that I deserve to feel upset about this for a little while, but I will get over this. It's like, okay, here's a bad thing that's happened. I'm allowed to stew about it. You know, like some people, it's like, you got cheated on. You know what? You just need to go back out there. You need to put yourself out there and and do it. You know what? No, fuck that. Like, think about what happened. Be angry and mad about it. And then you can let it go because you did give it the attention that it needed. Um, To me, that's what mindfulness is, is like, wow uh like here's something is like Haley and i got a condo in michigan cool awesome i was with the 
the Giants and everything like that. Um, then I got cut by the Giants, then I got signed by the Dolphins, and it's like, well, I'll be with Dolphins for a while, and that's a really, really great opportunity for me, but I also have to understand that Haley has to throw away a lot of things if she wants to be with me physically in Florida and move with me. Like, that's really shitty for her. But normally people would be like, well, Tabor achieved his dream and he's playing for the Miami Dolphins. Like, you know, you have to put that aside and like feel good for him. No, she fucking doesn't. Like, that sucks. She has to quit her job and she has to move halfway across the country just because I did this and like she wants to be with me. And like she's dedicated to our relationship, which is like very, very important. But like, there's a lot of suck that goes with the good. Mm -hmm. And being aware of that and being okay with that and, and, and acknowledging it. That's what mindfulness is. Absolutely. Not being, not being mindful is like, wow, you're being really selfish about this. Like he just he just achieved his dream. Fuck that. That's not. Yep. That's not good. And to get Soupster, super Webster on you guys, uh, mindfulness is the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. A mental state achieved by focusing on one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations used as a therapeutic technique. Um, I think it's something really important that a lot of people could benefit from focusing on. Um, and yoga tends to help you do that because you're, yep. you're having, even if you're in a class of 20, 30 people, you're having a moment of time with yourself where you're feeling challenged and you are have to come to terms with the challenge at hand and you have to address it. And like, it might sound like superficial, like, ah, oh, the challenge at hand, like you literally walk out of the class. Sure. But that's part of the challenge, right? Is that you don't walk out of the class. You and, do and the it pose. Starts, it starts in little lessons and they're little bite-sized things that you notice when you start going to a yoga class. Like, um, I just got done playing college football at that time and I want to play in the pros. Um, I should be in peak physical condition and I should be moving better than anybody else, right? Well, I start out my yoga class and the first couple poses we get in, I'm able to get in super deep. I am very limber in this position. I can complete it perfectly. Mm, I look good. Wow, all these people around me, man, they can't get as deep into the stretch as I can. And then 30 minutes later in class, the 60-year-old lady next to you who's doing this certain hamstring stretch is blowing you out of the fucking water and when you first look at it you're like god damn it and you like try to bend deeper and it's like fuck i can't do that and then once you start once you start going to yoga and you're listening to the message of the class because like the good yoga yoga instructors they're teaching you lessons every single class and it might not resonate everyone might not resonate with you but everyone here and there will and like my thing was like when I finally realized it, I went to, this was the actual, the, the lady who did the class that night was the owner of the studio. I go up to her, I go, I go mm -hmm. Kelly, I'm like, I'm like, yoga is so crazy. And she's like, why? I'm like, because when we were in blah, blah, blah position, I was killing it. Like I was so deep. Like I can, I can get into it perfectly textbook. And then I look over in the next position that we're in and the 60 year old lady is like touching her nose to her knee and like it's just a flat hamstring stretch. And I can't even, I can't even get there. And she's like, she's like, that's what like, she's good at some stuff. You're good at other stuff. Like she might be, you know, she's a grandma. Like she's a really good grandma. You don't know what it's like to have grandkids. Like you're just good at football. Right. And it's like, <laughs> like you're good at some stuff. Like you can't be good all the time. And, that's another thing like that mindfulness reminded me of is like when I learned that I got this like weird awakening that was totally opposite of what my kind of upbringing in college football was all about uh, in terms of like being a hard ass and a tough motherfucker. It's like <laughs> um, the thing I've read during this quarantine, there's, there was this thing going around on social media is like, if you don't come out of this quarantine with um, a new idea or a new skill or a new asset, then you never lacked free time, you lacked motivation. And like my college football player machismo 
part of myself is like, you know what? Fuck yeah. Like, man, I'm a lazy piece of shit. Like, I should be on top of this. I should be learning a new skill. I should be reading a new book, like learning about something. Like, God damn it. Like, fuck, I really am lacking motivation. And then I think about it with my mindfulness brain and I'm like, holy fuck, that, like, that, that's so that's so toxic. Like the whole world is going through a <laughs> pandemic and you're telling people they're pieces of shit for like that's going a, through this trauma. That's a they horrible way to, yeah, no, that's a horrible way to put it. But Anna Kendrick but, had a fucking tweet the other day about like, uh, I can finally no longer lie to myself about not doing all those things because I didn't have time. It's fair. <laughs> and that's the thing is like, uh, there's part of me where it's like, fuck, that's yeah. fair. It's fair. You literally have all the time in the world right now. You really do to do whatever you want. But there's some shit going on around us. And none of us, uh, we've never faced this before. Like you and so I. It's like, it's like, what the fuck? Like, you're you're good, right? Like you're you're paid through the NFL. You're you're okay, right? I assume that the NFL. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if we're getting paid this off season, but <laughs> like for terribly on on my end, I'm still able to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm I'm basically existing normal, just not getting to do the travel part of it. But like, I think to to your point, like mindfulness is being aware that like a lot of people aren't in that position. And mm -hmm. and that there are people around you that that can't have that existence that you and I have, and and that that that's a struggle. And I think that's yeah. what mindfulness comes down to is like awareness beyond self in a, in yeah. a lot of ways, or what yourself has compared to others. Totally. Oh my God. Yes. Like Haley, rightfully so. Like she she got laid off of her job two three weeks ago, and like she had to she filed for unemployment all that shit and she started freaking out as many people would yep in getting laid off during a pandemic and i had to like hey and she was getting on to me because i was like ordering a couple things here ordering a couple things there online like we just got a new we literally moved in this house like a month ago mm -hmm. a little over a month ago like we have contractor painting the house doing some work here and there and she's like getting on to me about my spending and i'm like listen like we need this because of xyz we need this because of xyz like i'm gonna order it hey don't forget i played in the fucking nfl last year like we are so much more okay as a family unit living in a home than 95 percent of the rest of the country like I understand, like, it is scary that you lost your job. It is scary that you have to file for unemployment, but, like, we're good. Like, we're fine. You battle your stuff. And, like, she finally thought it through, and, like, she wants to get her real estate license, and she's studying for that now. And it's, like, so sick because before she had no time, like, when she was employed, when she was studio manager of, of the Pilates studio that she was running, basically, like, she had zero time whatsoever to get her real estate license. And this is something that she had kind of tossed up in the air for like two years. And it's not because of that toxic thing that we were just talking about, like coming out with a new skill. It's because she wants to do it. And like, she can now it's like, we have probably another month and a half of quarantine at least. Yeah. Oh so like yeah. She might, she might as well get her fucking license. And it's sick as fuck. Cause she was just really upset that she didn't have any free time at the beginning. It's like, now we have free time. Now we're both financially in a place where it's like not completely terrible. Like, I don't know. The whole mindfulness thing is like, God, that was such a powerful tool that I learned. It is. It really is. And uh, it is, this is something that I came, became aware of a couple years ago. Um, and it's just, it's a, I like to think that I was already practicing to some degree that sort of, you know, uh, thinking, thought process, whatever. Um, excuse me, I have to handle the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can, I can, I can alinity the cat, and not experience an issue because he's gonna land right here. It's okay. <laughs> but no, no, mindfulness is very powerful. Like, not even for like you know the treatment of others, which I think is a very important thing, right? Like to be aware of those around you and what they're experiencing and all that, but also just for yourself for your own mental health, 
for your own growth and development. Mindfulness is incredibly important and <laughs> oh you shit. Um, sorry, cat. Uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Well, man, uh, we've been going at it for about three hours, 15 minutes. Uh, it's good been talk. a good fucking chat, man. Uh, not going to lie. I'm like a tiny bit a narcissist in the fact that I love talking about myself. So I mean, like, <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't, right? You're anybody, anybody who's like an entertainer personality, like you like talking about yourself a little bit. Talking to yourself or just talking. But I, I, th I think we've had good conversation. Um, I really appreciate you uh, coming on, having a chat, sipping a Bud Light uh, with me. Uh, yeah, I kind of climbed up some viewers the past 30, 40 minutes. No, it definitely has. So uh, nice. I appreciate it. You want to give a shout out to your stuff? I mean, everything on social media is the same. It's taper snapping. I'll just, it's literally the username that I have on Twitch. Such an easy username, too. Taper snapping. Yeah, it's like. Taper snapping, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I have a Facebook page technically, but that's just so I could remotely post stuff on my Instagram. <laughs> but literally, if you want to follow me, yeah, Taylor snapping, or as the RNA likes to say, Tabers ass clapping. <laughs> uh, either one. Oh, no awesome. Can... <laughs> well, hey man, I've... I I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoy your your Zoom date with friends tonight. It's, if that's it's still going. Already. Oh, it's all. I don't, all... Really, I, don't really <laughs> I didn't want to talk to those people anyway. Awesome. Well, hey man, thank you so much, and no uh, I appreciate it. And everyone else, you guys have yeah. a good night. We we're happy to chat in front of you, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Take it easy. Peace out.